State. And here are the Bearcats of Northwest Missouri State. Perfect in national semifinals under legendary help head coach Mel Churchma. And Cal U out of the PSAC, 16 and 2 on the road over the last three seasons, and hoping once again to make it to the national championship game in Florence, Alabama. And welcome to Maryville, Missouri for our second Division II National Semifinal. I'm Tom Hart. Roland Williams will be with me in just one moment. These two teams that go head-to-head -head tonight know plenty of success in the postseason, and there is no question that they belong here. For Cal, it's their third straight trip to the semifinals, and for Northwest Missouri State, their fifth in a row. But all is not easy for the Bearcats this season. In fact, just last week, they had to travel out west to Central Washington to take on the number one team in the nation, and it came down to the final six seconds. This touchdown for Central Washington made it a one-point game, but Tyler Roach to the Bearcats blocked the extra point, securing the victory and a one-point win for the Bearcats, sending them once again to the semifinals. My partner Roland Williams joins me now, and Roland Mel Churchma is a legend in these parts and in Division II for a reason. He is the winningest postseason coach in Division II history, and he's a guy that does it with class and character, just like his student athletes. That's right. You know, when you have a great team it starts with leadership and for him he has players and coaches who have a blue collar work ethic guys have attention to detail and a true cat passion to compete now when you take a look at this bearcat team three players in offense that epitomize that mentality are the junior quarterback blake bowl senior running back leron council and sophomore wide receiver jake soy now each of these guys are special ranking in the top 10 in the country in their respective positions and collectively they power the nation's third ranked offense they're clicking on all all cylinders. Now for Cal U, head coach John Luckhart, they also have an impressive resume and they have built the Vulcan football into a consistent contender for the national championship. But after talking with the coach yesterday, he made it perfectly clear to us that his team's focus is beyond making it to the semifinals. They want to win national championships and they certainly have the weapons to get it done. Now when I take a look at their offensive arsenal, it starts with team captain, the quarterback Josh Porters. This guy's one of one or two quarterbacks in Cal U history with more than 3,000 yards passing. And the senior wide receiver, A.J. Jackson, man, he's special. Six foot six, broken every single single record. Fantastic. This is a game of pure offense in this semifinals. Both of these teams have already persevered through a long season. The winner tonight will have a prestigious opportunity. It's pride, passion, and playoff. It is a gorgeous night in Northwest Missouri for this Division II playoff, and these two teams have proven that it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Both squads have combined 23-2 and since losing their season opener. In fact, Cal started the season 0-2, and now here they are in the national semifinals. A gorgeous night for football. Folks may need a bigger coat than that. It's 29 degrees. Wind chill has it at 19. The forecast is clear and cold. Still, the Northwest fans at least going partially shirtless for the kickoff here. Cal won the toss. They've deferred, so Northwest Missouri State will start with the football. Derek Fiorenza will kick it off. Tyler Shaw and Jordan Simmons back to return for the Bearcats of Northwest Missouri State out of the MIAA. And Cal out of the PSAC. We are underway in Maryville. Jordan Simmons from the four. Simmons has electric speed and a burst up past the 25 down to the 29 yard line. The 12 and one Northwest Missouri State Bearcats are led by junior quarterback Blake Bowles Rowe. He is a special guy. He's special, man. We talked with the coach about his arm. He's an efficient 77% in the playoffs and he's a pure leader. Look for him to drive this team to success. 295 yards passing last week for Bowles. Play action on first down. He unloads for a first down as he finds Nick Rhodes. Let's talk difference makers now for the Bearcats. 
Well, when you talk Bearcats, you got to look at the ground game. It starts out with LeRon Council, this All-American. He's going to take the pressure off of Blake Bowles, allow them to get downfield. Also, Jake Soy, the coach says he's one of the best receivers he's ever seen. And Tyler Shaw, he's the one that has to show up big when the double teams go on Soy. Shaw has to make big plays. Three wide. Here's Council for the first time tonight. He's bottled up at the line of scrimmage. And they'll give him credit for it progress for a gain of one, setting up second and nine. Now the difference makers for Cal. Well, they have a lot of them. One of them, Dante Brown. Okay, he's the heartbeat of this defense, leads the team in tackles. Also, Terrence Johnson, he's their shutdown corner, has a big opportunity against Jake Soy. And last but not least, Big Willie Walker. This guy is the Gene Upshaw finalist, one of the best defensive linemen in college football. Swing pass now to Jordan Simmons, the return man, and he has to fight to make it back to the line of scrimmage. Terrence Johnson, an All-American corner, came up for the stop along with Rontez Miles, who's one of two strong safeties that Cal will employ tonight. As they go with a 4-2-5 look, Miles gets a break here on third and nine. One of the things you're going to notice about the Bearcat offense, they play up-tempo offense. You're not going to see them huddle that much unless they're in the red zone. They got those wristbands. They use them. They keep that offense moving. Gabe Hernandez jump. Free play and a deep ball for Soy. Incomplete. Jake Soy, the redshirt sophomore from Durant, Iowa, is a deep threat. But coverage down the field by Cal. This first flag of the night goes against the Vulcans. Gabe Hernandez jumped. This is something that the coaches told us, Ro. When they go fast tempo, they want to get the other team to get in the neutral zone. Yeah, when they get up on the line of scrimmage, the quarterback is going to give them that hard count. That's where he just yells out a number. The green shirts know they're not supposed to leave. This allows them to come back and reassess the defense. Nice job of using that hard count to get the uh, defensive lineman offside. Third and four now for Northwest Missouri State on the opening drive. Empty backfield, Bowles to the air, fantastic hands and a catch for a first down for Tyler Shaw, a freshman out of St. Louis who has come on strong. Nine catches in the last two weeks for Tyler Shaw. Well, this is just a nice pitch and catch. Blake Bowles, you know, you got to start out getting yourself in the rhythm in these kind of games. Nice way to come back to the ball by Tyler Shaw. You see him catching it with all hands, offensive linemen, giving them a little time. This is a confidence builder for the young freshman making a big play. Out of the eye formation now. They motion the tight end, Kilgore. Toss, sweep. And on the ground goes Billy Creason, and Creason picks up a few yards. Creason is also coming on strong lately as this Northwest Missouri State offense continues uh, to progress. You see their starters scroll across the top of your screen. Creason now with 15 carries in the last four games, only 11 carries in uh, the previous Two months of the season. Second and five. This is Laurent Council and a burst up the middle for Council. And he carries it all the way down to the 32-yard line before Eric Harris brings him down. Well, you know, you're going to see on the left-hand side, you know, you watch Justin Callaway, number 75, 77, Dane Wardenberg, bust open that hole. Good job by Council. Again, hitting the hole, keeping those shoulders square. These are the kind of runs they need early on in this chess match to get this Bearcat offense going. A 16-yard run for the senior out of Kansas City. An hour and a half down the road. Bowles has time. Dumps it inside. This is complete to Council. And Council takes it to the 21-yard line. Eric Harris with another stop. Let's take a look at the raw numbers for this Northwest Missouri State offense head-to-head -head with Cal. Both of these teams can light it up. Northwest Missouri State third in the nation with 42 points a game. And, Ro, they were cruising along until struggling a little bit offensively last week against Central Washington. You know, one of the things that make both of these offenses so good, they can run and they can pass, really keep defenses on their heels. And last week, you know, you have some stalls. They had some penalties early in the game. You know, you can't do those things. That can stop the best offense. Jordan Simmons with a shake-and-bake move, carries it inside the 15-yard line. And this opening drive for Northwest Missouri State continues as they march down the field, employing Council, Creason, and Simmons now to carry the ball. You know, we talked to defensive coordinator for Cal U, Mike Conway, and, you know, we talked about, you know, the guys up front. The big matchup is going to be able to see how do the Bearcats offensive linemen match up against the Vulcans defensively, and right now the Bearcats are doing it. Here's Simmons getting to the outside and carrying it to the six-yard line. A little misdirection that time 
with Council drawing the attention. Well, it's a little misdirection, but one thing that's going in the right direction. Look at all those green shirts snapping and locking on to white shirts. Nice job, number 76, Cody Johnson. You see guys over there, 77 again, getting in there. Wardenburg, you know, this is a nice job by the offensive linemen and wide receivers getting involved in the blocking. That's a nice job of guys up front being where they're supposed to be. That was actually a pass from Bowles to Simmons as he shoveled it forward. Well, that's one of those involved kind of. Absolutely. I still call that a run. To throw into the end zone. Soy, touchdown, Northwest Missouri State. The 24th receiving touchdown of the season for Jake Soy. Well, that has to have Coach Churchman has to be happy for what he saw. This is just a nice job of getting a single coverage. Soy just beat him, went outside release, got up to his highest point, pretty much had him as soon as he left off the ball. Terrence Johnson, they nicknamed Didius, has a big matchup against Soy. That time Soy got the better half of that situation. Todd Adolph on for the extra point. Nick Rhodes holds, and Northwest Missouri State puts together a fantastic drive. Bowles to Soy for the score. And Bowles starts this game a perfect six for six. And it's the Bearcats firing the opening shot. <laughs> this telecast is sponsored by the NCAA Division II President's Council. NCAA Division II, training student athletes for lifelong achievement. Here in Northwest Missouri State, a fantastic shot of the Nottoway County Courthouse and a fantastic shot of Jake Soy. Now third all-time in NCAA Division II history for career touchdowns, and he's only a sophomore. Well, he's a spectacular sophomore. That time, the simple outside release on Terrence Johnson, pretty much a pitch and catch. Blake Bowles released it before he actually came open. That's just a nice job of Jake Soy running a fundamental route and getting open. A 10-play drive to start this game for Northwest Missouri State out of the MIAA. Adolph with a low line drive kick. This is picked up by Freddie Bacco, the running back. Bacco has tremendous speed, and here he goes all the way out to the 40-yard line. And great field position for Cal U to try and answer Northwest Missouri State. Chad Kilgore had the special team stop for Northwest Missouri State. The Vulcans of Cal U led by graduate student quarterback Josh Portis. He is a tremendous athlete. You know, they talk about the calm of his leadership. He's very mobile, he's accurate, he has it all. There's a reason why he's in the semifinals, because he can make plays. On play action, Portis wants to throw on first down. He finds his big tight end, Blake Williamson. That's a 21-yard gain on first down for Cal. Portis to Williamson. Well, they talk about this freshman. This guy has got his swagger late in the season. The young tight end getting open, settling down the zone. Nice job by Josh Portis reading and delivering right on target. Nice job by the tight end sitting in that zone and getting upfield. Get that ball security away. Coach John Luckhart told us that Williamson from little old Houston, Pennsylvania isn't used to crowds. He said in the past he played in front of three people in a cowbell. Well, bigger audience tonight, and he pays off on the first play. Now Wendell Brown with a first down run for the Vulcans and the shootout in full effect. Two plays for Cal, and they're already inside the 20. Well, that was a nice change up. You know, you just saw him deliver the strike with the passing game. Then you see a little play action. No. He gets it. He hits it inside. Nice job. Offensive lineman showing it. But look at the move by Wendell Brown, showing you the cross, cross back, showing you the vision to cut back and get open. Just a nice job by a, a big-time running back. Brown, a junior out of Duquesne, Pennsylvania, one of two great running backs we'll see tonight for the Vulcans. Backo you already saw on the kick return. Wendell Brown had a 20-yard touchdown run in the first quarter against Shippensburg couple of weeks ago the direct snap to Brown and Brown will bounce this one outside 
A juke move at the 14. He's inside the 10 and out of bounds at the 9-yard line. And another Cal first down. Three plays, three times to move the chain. Well, you got to watch the fake by Josh Porter. Watch this stuff. I'm watching. Look at, oh, the little jump up. And I don't know what that was, but a flick came right to Wendell Brown. Nice job by the offensive lineman. Again, they're sticking and staying, but the quickness of Wendell Brown is obviously uh, causing problems right now for the Bearcats. He just seems to be able to hit that corner whenever he wants to. First and goal for Cal U. Now out of the eye. Portis with the handoff to Brown. Brown dragged down behind the line of scrimmage by Chad Kilgore and may have made his way back to the line of scrimmage. That'll set up second and goal now for the Vulcans. Well, I tell you what, you know, you love college football and you love to see some high-powered offense. You are in for a treat. You know, this has been a tremendous job by the Vulcans. Offense according to Mike Jacobs, you're in a hostile environment. You come back and respond after an excellent drive by the Bearcats and put one out here on your own. Nice job, Vulcans. Coach Luckhart found Mike Jacobs, a longtime assistant coach at Ohio State and West Virginia. He's in his first season directing the offense for the Vulcans. Portis wants to throw on second and goal. Now gets happy feet, dances in the pocket, and finally gets brought down for a loss of two. Sean Paddock with a school record 27th sack of the season. Pardon me, of his career, and he found the supposedly elusive Portis. Well, you got to give some credit to that secondary for the Bearcats. That time Portis was looking downfield, there was nothing available. Forced him to bring the ball down and start getting mobile. But then the hard work of Paddock, that's what he's known for, his work ethic. He's a big film guy, but he also is a guy with a big motor. Way to finish and capitalize, but the real play was made by the secondary. Paddock playing with a screw in his ankle. After undergoing surgery, he missed five games mid-season. He said, you know, it's just a regular old two-inch screw you could find at any hardware store. Go down to Menards, find yourself a screw, put it in your ankle. It has not slowed him down one bit. And number 97 already making an impact tonight. We expect a high-scoring game. That means any opportunity you have in the red zone that you can't capitalize on is a missed opportunity. So this is a big third and goal for Cal. Portis facing pressure again. Portis fails to get rid of it. He takes a major loss that time. It was Adam Vondrak who forced him out of bounds. Well, you know, on a play like that, you know, again, it was a nice job by Portis not forcing it in there and doing a bad throw. He might want to throw that one away. But again, you got to give credit two places, the secondary of the Bearcats as well as the pressure from the linebackers really helping them move. You see Coach Churchma, he's loving that because he knows the kind of talent they're playing against in the Vulcan offense. Mark DeMonkis on for this 31-yard attempt as long as 37. Got it. And so Cal able to score on its first possession, but inside the red zone, failed to find a touchdown. It's the ninth field goal of the season for the sophomore from Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Both teams have scored on their opening drives. We are underway in Maryville, Missouri, and the shootout has commenced between number two, Northwest Missouri State, and number 22, Cal U. Call it the student luxury suites here at Northwest Missouri State. The South Complex dorms overlook Mel Church. Yep, that's right. You're on TV. Take a look at that one. Here we are tucked into the corner of Northwest Missouri, smack in the middle of the nation's heartland where they love their football in Maryville. We're just 99 miles north of Kansas City or 45 minutes as Roland drives here at Northwest Missouri State, a school that was founded back at the turn of the century. In 1905, their enrollment continues to grow now at 6,900. The Bearcats have two football national championships under Mel Churchma, 98 and 99. Four times they've been national runner-ups. Four straight seasons they've been the bridesmaid instead of the bride. And they're looking for a return trip to Florence, Alabama. Well, I just want to find out, how do you get one of those luxury suites where you get a chance to study and look out at the football game? That's pretty big time. It is big time. I imagine you, there's some PSLs involved in that situation. Well, it's something. I mean, I'm talking about the dorm rooms. I mean, what do you got to be a senior with a certain GPA? I mean, that's a distraction for a freshman. Derek Fiorenza, graduate student out of Downington, Pennsylvania, will kick it away. Shaw, one of those back to return. This is a 
Short kick and Simmons takes it at the 15 yard line. Pardon me this is Shaw and Shaw to the 35 and Shaw to the 40 past the 40 yard line to set up Northwest Missouri State once again. Let's check out the last scoring drive for Northwest Missouri State to open this game. And they did it on the ground and through the air. Blake Bowles, a perfect six for six, 38 yards through the air to start this one. Laurent Council had a first down run. And then Bowles was able to go to the air and find guys like Council and then Soy for the touchdown. This play whistled dead before they could get it off. A 27-yard return by... Tyler Shaw has him set up. Larry Honeycutt out of the South Atlantic Conference, our white hat tonight. Carson Newman out of the. Carson Newman out of the South Atlantic Conference lost tonight. Buck Wakefield had four touchdowns, but they lost to Grand Valley. Here's the penalty. Well, you know, we talk about the up tempo offense of the Bearcats. You know, the hard count that comes pretty much before every single play, the Bearcats got to remember, hey, that hard cost counts for the other guys. That's not for you. Bowles over the middle to Soy, his second catch of the night, and he stumbles all the way down to the 36-yard line. Pardon me, the 31-yard line for Soy, and a first down grab for the sophomore from Iowa. Well, I see a flag out there, but in the meantime, let's just talk about Blake Bowles and Mr. Jake Soy. Ran a nice skinny post route. You saw him get those heads around and wrap it. Tremendous throw and catch, but negated. Another procedure penalty against Northwest Missouri State. Their second straight. You know, we talk about the up-tempo offense, and it's important that when you have that, you got to hang in there with the hard count right now. Five yards lined up in the second. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. So that negates a 49-yard gain by Soy. They didn't have enough guys on the line of scrimmage. This year that rule is uh, determined by the number of players you have in the backfield. I, I, do you think that Coach Churchma agreed with that call? Never when it takes 49 yards off. <laughs> Here's Rhodes with the grab. He is stood up and wrestled to the ground by a host of Vulcans led by Terrence Johnson. Josh Menendez and Rontel Tez Miles in on the stop, but after an 11-yard gain for Northwest. Well, the great thing about the Bearcats that they do have an offense that has explosive plays. So in these situations, don't panic. Don't try to go for it all in one play. You still have a few more downs. Nice job by Blake Bowles realizing just picking up positive yards is a great thing in this situation. Well, just like you talked about in the open roll in this Northwest Missouri State offense full of weapons, we featured three. There are more than that. Fantastic grab trying to set up the screen. That'll go for a first down. Brian Shannon with his first grab of the night for the junior from Council Bluffs, Iowa. Well, you know the offense is off to a great start when everybody's getting involved. They call this play jailbreak. The receiver came from the outside, down in the middle, did a nice job after the catch, sort of weaving and bobbing and weaving his way through to pick up the first down. Nice awareness by the junior, realizing where the sticks were to pick up the first down. Blake Bowles is a perfect 8-for-8 eight eight to start this game. He's found six different receivers, but another whistle. This time the line judge will stop the play before it gets started. Timeout, Northwest Missouri State, as they look at a first and ten. You know, Mel Churchma calls his offense over. When they uh, come to the line of scrimmage and then give that hard count, Blake Bowles looks to the sideline and gets the call from the coaching staff. It comes from upstairs down to Mel Churchma, and I think he may have uh, had a communication issue that time in trying to get the play call in. Well, what makes Mel Churchma a legend? We talked about his class and his character, the fact that he exudes those qualities, and so do his student athletes. But this guy flat out knows how to win. He's one of the winningest active coaches in Division II football. Ken Sparks of Carson Newman, elim uh, eliminated tonight by Grand Valley State. Mel Churchma, with 228 wins, can move past St. Paul's Willard Bailey and be third all-time in wins. John Luckhart is also a 200-win coach. A lot of wins in this football field today. First and 10 for Northwest Missouri State. Council on the left side. 
and Council gets spun around after a gain of nearly eight on first down. Number 22, Cal, Pennsylvania, and number two, Northwest Missouri State, go head-to-head -head tonight from a chilly Maryville, Missouri in the Division II semifinals with a trip to the national championship on the line. Tom Hart alongside Super Bowl champ Roland Williams as we bring you the action here tonight on a gorgeous night for football at a packed house here at Mel Church Field. Council takes this one for a first down, cuts it back inside, and finally popped to the ground by Rontaz Miles and Eric Harris. LaRon Council has had a fantastic season, Roland, and it continues tonight. Well, LaRon Council has set a tempo to start off this game, but he's not old and not used to not lighting things up. You see him there hitting inside, running hard, 107 yards a game. And how he does it is he keeps those shoulders square and he keeps those legs pumping. This guy is Bulls a picked right off. Back. Terrence Johnson has his first pick, and he wants to bring this one back. Terrence Johnson down the sideline and out to the 40-yard line. Laron Council finally forced him out of bounds. It's the 16th career interception for the senior from Braddock, Pennsylvania. He's an All-American for a reason. Well, the Vulcans want to turn this thing around and say, hey, we're talking about the Bearcats too much. Time to talk about these Vulcans. Terrence Johnson does a nice job of shadowing the receiver and looking, keeping his eyes on the quarterback's eyes. Nice job of doing that. Then showing the little run after the catch. Nice job of following the eyes of Blake Bowles, not following the receiver, but paying attention to the quarterback and breaking that ball when the opportunity presented itself. Bowles was looking for Soy. For Blake Bowles, his 13, uh, 12th pardon me, interception to go against 38 touchdowns on the season. And a game-changing play, perhaps, for the Vulcans. Portis, play action, looks near side, complete to A.J. Jackson. And that's good for a first down. These two guys, A.J. Jackson and Josh Portis, were both ticketed for the Southeastern Conference. Portis signed with Ole Miss, but ended up at Cal. Jackson signed with Ole Miss, and Josh Portis was Urban Meyer's first recruit at Florida. He eventually left when Tim Tebow came to campus, moved on to Ralph Friedgen's program at Maryland, but didn't like the way he was being used primarily as a running quarterback. He said, I want a chance to play and show up my arm, and that he has done. He's thrown for more than 3,000 yards and 33 touchdowns, a record-setting season for the Vulcan quarterback. Right guard, right tackle, Jack Range, pardon me, may have jumped there for Cal. Well, Portis told us that he's just ecstatic to be playing for Division II and just, just couldn't have a better opportunity to showcase his talents. And his coach is pretty darn happy, too. Ball, ball start on the offense, number 78. Penalty. Still down. Richard Jr., Jack Range out of Ottawa, Ontario, rock back. Well, you know, when you have a guy on the other side like Sean Paddock, 97 for the Bearcats staring at you. You know, for Jack, he has a tough assignment. A lot of things going on in his mind, but he has to be calm. You're playing the way. You're playing a little bit of crowd noise. You got to hang in there and uh, wait for that snap count. A couple of flags for each side. Portis hands it off to Wendell Brown, and Brown takes it to the 50 before he is wrapped up by Kyle Sunderman. Uh, I'm glad you touched on Sean Paddock, and I want to ask you this, row as a fantastic blocking tight end at what point in the game do you start to worry about Sean Paddock and give Jack Range or Shamar Jones the left tackle help with a running back or a tight end to chip a great pass rusher well you want to give as many opportunities early in the football game for the, for them to sort of tee off and get that running game going you know a guy like Jack Range is 325 pounds Paddock's 255 and so that's the way how you can sort of slow down and take a little edge off that pass rush you know there haven't been that many opportunities and plays run but whenever you get a chance to take a shot on a guy like Paddock you got to take it to slow those wheels down single back set Wendell Brown still in the game for Cal and the play clock ran out in the Vulcans Portis tried for a timeout and he did get it just before the flag hit the turf so both teams have used a timeout early in this one and Portis will gather his troops to talk about it as they get set to try and take advantage of their takeaway. Four minutes to go in the first, seven to three, Bearcats. Number 22 versus number two, Cal PA trails seven to three, but they try to answer here. It's been a fantastic playoff run for the Vulcans, and it's been primarily based on an opportunistic offense. Now they try to take advantage 
of the interception by their All-American quarterback Terrence Johnson. Portis out of the shotgun facing second and long got popped as he threw he completes the second pass of the night to A.J. Jackson and that'll set up third and long well here's how Cal U got here they did not win the PSAC they got in as an at-large bid they won their first round game in a blood against Fayetteville State slipped by Shippensburg to avenge an earlier loss and then hung 57 on West Liberty and the defense held, held West Liberty to 35 points row after that same team put up a basketball score the week before 84 to 63 number one offense in division two West Liberty was shut down by that Vulcan grip of a defense third and six for Cal U and they use a timeout here they're second on this drive. As they face a key third and six. Well, here's how Northwest Missouri State got here. Their fourth straight MIAA championship. Got them an automatic bid. A first round bye as well. They were home against Abilene Christian out of the Lone Star Conference. Posted a 35 to 10 victory to, uh, to negate that opening Season loss to ACU. Then Northwest Missouri State, we showed you earlier, survived on the road against previously undefeated and number one Central Washington with a block extra point by Tyler Roach to secure the victory. You know, they played awfully sloppy in that game. You know, you talk with Coach Churchma, you know, it took special players to step up. Mount Burside had 12 tackles in that game, got some big plays out of Mr. Jake Shoy, had a career best game. And, you know, when you're playing in the playoffs, you know, special players got to step up and do what they're supposed to do. Third and six, and it's a Northwest Missouri State team that has plenty of playoff experience. And their players to a man talked about the fact that, that playoff experience over the years helps them prepare for the big games. Portis to throw, and a stumbling catch made by the tight end Blake Williamson. It's the second grab of the night for the freshman tight end. Hey, I got to look out for my tight ends. That was a nice job. It wasn't stumbling. It was athletic. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's enough for a first down stumble or no stumble. And the Cal U band energetic after a 15-hour bus ride to make it here today. They also brought a fan bus full of about 60 fans. Fans and family of the players on the ground Wendell Brown again and he pinballs his way down to the 31 yard line to set up second and a short six nice job by the fullback Brandon Erickson number five he's about five foot seven he's 195 not your prototypical fullback guy he was a tailback but he just came up in there and has been delivering nice crisp blocks to give Wendell Brown some creases you know yeah, it's in the family for Anderson, his brother Sean, free safety on this team. And Brandon Anderson out of uh, Penn Hills High School in Pittsburgh in the I formation in front of Wendell Brown. Here's Brown. Brown gets it to the outside. Tries to stiff arm a man. Does that and gets it right towards the marker. Evan Wilmis, a senior from right here in Maryville, had the stop on Wendell Brown. Roland, so far tonight, we've seen all Brown and no Backo in the Cal backfield. Is that a surprise? Well, they said that Wendell Brown, he's their workhorse. He's their guy. But he's been overcoming some injuries. Had a hip injury, had some problems with his abdomen, so he's been fighting. And when he can't get it done, Freddie Backo has came in and done exceptionally well. But if Brown has the hot hand, they're going to keep feeding this leader. He's the one that gets this team fired up. One of the emotional leaders, he's off to a tremendous start. Well, Backo in the game now, spelling Brown, and again, the official stop play. And Cal, is that their third timeout? Their third timeout used on this drive alone. And with a minute 25 to go in the first quarter, Cal is out of timeouts. And Mel Churchma not happy with this crew, and he's wondering exactly how they were able to get the timeout called, I believe, before the play clock ran out. 
Well, if you're the Vulcans, it's so important that you get into this hostile environment and you play well. You know, sometimes you got to do stuff outside the box. You know, you might not have it originally and say, hey, we want to use all of our time us, but lack the flow of the game come to you. If there's a look where Portis needs to take a look at something, you got to do what you got to do. And, and ultimately, that's what this game's about. It's about winning, and you, and you got you to do what's necessary to make the offense. All right, come. take a look at the play clock, lower right of your screen. And the official comes in with three seconds left on the play clock to call the timeout. Uh, Mel Churchma is out on the field right now arguing with uh, the South Atlantic Conference crew. And he's all the way out at the hash marks, Ro. When's the last time you saw a coach all the way out at the hash marks? <laughs> What's he out in the hash marks for? You think? Well, you know, come on. The guy wants to argue. I, that's, I respect that. It's a big game. All right, now they'll uh, get some new personnel into the game. Cal comes out of the huddle. And out of their third timeout used on this drive. Remember, this is a drive that started with a Terrence Johnson interception. He's still out there. <laughs> Mel Churchma has not <laughs> left the field. This is classic. Josh Portis. Standing at quarterback saying, come on, coach, this is my field now. I know your name's on the field. It is Mel Churchman Field it's after his all. Field. But Josh Portis wants to take it over. Third and short. Portis gives to the fullback Anderson. He's stuffed but rolls his way to a first down. Tyler Roach hit him behind the line of scrimmage. But Brandon Anderson carries it for a first down. Well, that was just a single effort. You see Brandon Anderson getting it. Everything got clogged up inside. Tremendous job coming from the other side. Sunderman, number 94, clogged it up. But you saw him. That was just the extra lean. And now this guy, if you don't know anything about Brandon Anderson, the senior is a guy that's ripped up. He's one of those strong men. The guy has that kind of strength that you can only feel in certain short yardage situations. Portis trying to rename Mel Church field. He steps away from the pressure. He'll tuck it and get to the corner with ease and stiff arms his way to nearly a first down. Justin Welch was there to finally force him out of bounds. It's good for a first down for Cal U. You know, you talk about the calm leadership of Josh Portis. Here's one of those situations. You know, things got a little crazy. He brought the ball down. You see him just doing what he's supposed to do, looking for the pylon, excuse me, looking for that first down marker, getting there, showing you some of the speed. Now, normally a quarterback, you know, likes to be run happy. Not Portis. He runs when he needs to run. That shows you the maturity of this quarterback progressing in this offense. Well, he's only he only had coming into the season 14 pass attempts in four years since he arrived at Florida. He said, I don't want to be pigeonholed as a running quarterback, even though I can do that. I want to show off my arm. Here's Wendell Brown carrying for a few. But when he was playing for Ralph Friedgen at Maryland, they strictly used him in running situations. It, it got to the point, Ro, where you could almost put it up on the Jumbotron when he came in the game. Hey, Maryland's going to run the ball now. And Josh said, I want to take full advantage of my talents and get to some place where I can be a total quarterback. Absolutely, and he's already done that. When you say a quarterback's thrown for more than 3,000 yards in the season, that's impressive. You're a throwing quarterback. Josh Portis, you have proven that. And uh, so far in this football game, you're doing what's necessary to be successful. That's the end of the first quarter for Maryville, Missouri. Number two, Northwest Missouri State leads Cal 7-3. But the Vulcans of Cal U looking to answer as their drive continues. We bring you back to Mel Church Midfield at Northwest Missouri State University right after this. We start the second quarter. It's 7 to 3 Northwest Missouri State. Cal PA driving on their second possession, but they burned all three of their timeouts on this drive in this first quarter. Well, what kind of effect will that have? <laughs> well, we'll find out as, as this half plays out, but in my opinion, when you're playing in a hostile environment, you got to maximize every single drive. We just talked about that, and if Cal U feel like they got to use their timeouts, then use them. Here's the fullback Anderson straight up the middle. And Anderson picks up a few yards to set up third down for the Vulcans. Only 37 carries on the season for Brandon Anderson, but a couple of key carries on this drive. Remember, he picked up a first down on third and short a few moments ago. But since they've used three timeouts, that first quarter felt like it was days ago. 
Well, one thing that both of these offenses have done a nice job of is they've been getting people involved. You know, you've seen Wendell Brown, the tailback. You've seen the fullback, Anderson. You've seen the tight end, Williamson, the receiver, Jackson, Moore. You know, this is a, a nice start if you're an offense getting everybody active and involved in, in the game. Play action, Portis looking towards the end zone. Checks underneath, first down to the tight end. And the third grab of the night for Blake Williamson. The freshman only had 13 catches coming in. He's got three already here. Well, this highlights Josh Portis again, the captain, the leader, showing you the progression. He looked to go to the end zone, but now he's having the maturity to look for the underneath route. The tight end, Blake Williamson, this freshman, again, he has the swagger. He's starting to get more involved. We talked with, with Josh Portis. He said, man, even Blake Williamson, he's trying to even, starting to even talk a little bit more. You know, he's, he's being a freshman, but starting to feel like he can compete at a major level, and that's just a nice job of Portis looking to the big guy. You know what's Underneath. unique in playoff football, Roland, is the way it extends a season. Williamson may be a freshman, but this is his 15th game of the season. <laughs> right. That's a lot of football, you know. Uh, when you have those extra games, which is one, again, why I love Division II football so much, you know, you graduate. You know, in essence, you know, when you finish out your career, you know, you played in, geez, 50 games. I mean, you played a lot of football, and that really helps your team and your players develop. Blake Williamson, a classic example. He's a guy that, for all intents and purposes, is halfway through his sophomore season already. Yeah, Northwest Missouri State has been in the finals four straight years. They'll play 60 games in a four-year span. First and goal for the Vulcans. This is the 12th play of the drive. 6.35 on the clock. Much longer than that on your Mickey Mouse watch. Fumble football. Anderson looks like he fell on it in the pile. And second and goal coming up from the four. Well, you know, it's a big battle going on up inside. Left guard Dan Jordan playing against Tyler Roach. 315 pounds. It's a lot of Angus, a lot of beef banging inside in there. And, and when you're the fullback, Brandon Anderson, you got to hold on to that pill, man. You know, it's too, poor, too important down here in the red zone. You got to maximize those opportunities. I know he knows that. He's a senior. You just got to maximize it. Second and goal. Just the second possession for Cal. It started with a Blake Bowles interception picked off by Terrence Johnson. Play action again. Portis chucks this one to the band looking for the tight end Williamson again. Well, you know who deserves a lot of credit? The Bearcat defensive coordinator, Scott Boswick. He's doing a tremendous job. They play a 4-2-5. This fun-loving guy, he allows that secondary to spread out. Miles Burnside, the defense, the safety. Ryan Jones. These guys are blanketing right now. A.J. Jackson, they're big-time playmakers. Terrence Moore. It's a reason why Josh Portis can't get into the end zone. It's because this secondary and this defense is playing lights out right now. There's really not that many opportunities. You got to look underneath for, for the tight end again. Maybe Blake Williamson again. But right now, that Bearcat defense is playing lights out in the red zone. They just get the playoff. Portis floats one to the end zone. Incomplete flag on the play. Miles Burnside absolutely laid out the intended receiver, A.J. Jackson. Well, that's the kind of physical play you want out of a defense, but that was a little bit too early with <laughs> the contact. Just a smidgen too early. Miles Burnside, he is a guy that's the, the reigning national defensive player of the year. Just a little too aggressive in the red zone. Last interference against the defense, number eight. The ball will be placed at the yard line. First down. They say number eight, Aldwin Foster Redding, but it was certainly 15. Watch him in the lower left corner of your screen as he finds Jackson Powell. Yeah, I think they missed the, uh, the, the number of that guy, but again, nice job by Churchman. He's given his argument saying, hey, that ball wasn't catchable. Who cares about knocking his <laughs> the receiver's chin strap off? Wasn't catchable. AJ Jackson, 6'6. It seems everything is catchable to him. Here's Brown. Brown goes over the top and in. A hurdle move at the one. And Cal finds the end zone for the first time tonight. Nice job by the left side offensive line, number 77, Shamar Jones, Dan Jordan, number 70. Just really just knocking people down. You know, you talk about, you know, this offensive line. You talked about the big matchup against the big 300-pounders. Nice job up front giving the clear lane for Wendell Brown to get his track hurdle and step into the end zone. Extra point good for DeMontis. 
And Cal U uses three timeouts on this drive. It pays off with a two-yard touchdown run from Wendell Brown. Seven minutes and 41 seconds off the clock in that scoring drive for the California Vulcans. 14 plays, 61 yards. Brown takes it in from two yards out. Well, this Cal team flew out to Kansas City and made the drive up. It is a long drive from California, PA, which is located just outside of Pittsburgh by about 35 miles. And this institution has reinvented its football program under John Luckhart. Founded all the way back in 1852, an enrollment of 8,200, and they have three national titles, two in softball, one in women's hoops. That came in 2004, and that came just across this football field right here at Northwest Missouri State back in 04. They're having a great year again in all sports up at uh, Cal U. Women's volleyball just finished a run to the Elite Eight. Their women's soccer program also had a run to the Elite Eight this season. And, of course, that national title in women's basketball back in 04. Tyler Shaw back deep for Northwest Missouri State along with Jordan Simmons. Derek Fiorenza, transfer from Villanova, got his degree in three years at Villanova, working on his second master's degree at Cal U. He's the kicker for the Vulcans and puts it in the air from the 30. Room service hop to Simmons. Simmons to the 25, to the 30. And Simmons muscles his way all the way up to the 38-yard line. Terrence Johnson, one of the Vulcans, in on the tackle for the special teams. So Blake Bowles and the Northwest Missouri State offense returned to the field roll, and he was a perfect 8-for-8 eight eight until that interception on the last drive. What happened on the pick? Well, on the pick, it was just, frankly, a bad throw. You know, Blake Bowles does a great job against 77% completion in the playoffs but that time just trying to eye his number one receiver a bit too much bad throw here's his number one running back we're on council who leaves his feet helicopters his way for a gain of 10 on first down running behind abe quad well you know the one thing that leron council is doing is that he's running hard look at those eyes he's looking downfield you can tell that he's aware of the blocking that he has you know when you set a tempo as a running back and defenders know that you're ready to run hard you know it really sets precedence and, and those guys got to stay focused and that really opens up the play action pass great opportunities for jake soy with council running so hard cal jumps again free play for northwest and it's incomplete flag after the play against Josh Menendez and this is a area that the officials at the NCAA level have put more focus on and that is hitting a defenseless receiver and we'll see exactly what the call is for Menendez who popped quad who's returning from injury from a concussion that he suffered last week early in the game here's the call we have to play Defense, on side. Defense, on side. Personal foul against the defense. Both those fouls we've been picked up. 20 yards and penalties on that play. Here it is. First the jump. We talked about that hurry up offense, that up tempo offense, and the hard count. And then this play is just. This is just. It's not good football. You know you can't do that. I think it's a great job of the referee. You got to protect. The receivers. I think it's a good decision for college football to look after the guys. Josh Menendez, you gotta, you gotta play more intelligent than that. On the defense. You know, you could tell he didn't. He didn't mean to flush, run him flush through. You could tell he tried to lay off a little bit, but still, you know, Coach Luckhart. You know, he talked about his team being disciplined. He knows better than that. First and ten now for Northwest Missouri State. Four flags against Cal in this game, adding 30 yards to the Bearcats. New formation for Northwest Missouri State. Laurent Council in to take the direct snap. Blake Bowles is slotted at the top of the formation all the way on the right side. Council 
hands it off to Billy Creason, and Creason fights his way up to the 31-yard line, a gain of four. National semifinal number two as Division II football works towards their national championship in Florence, Alabama. 22 Cal at 11 and 3, taking a 12 and 1 Northwest Missouri State, number two in the nation, and a two seed. Tom Hart alongside Roland Williams. Glad you're with us tonight as this Division II tournament rolls on. The winner plays for a national title. A strike to Soy that time from Bowles, the only receiver he looked at, and that picks up a first down. Well, that's exactly the kind of play you need to get back on track if you're Blake Bowles. You know, he, what he did was he just used his feet a little bit, got out into some space. Nice job by Jake Soy running the Chris route, selling in the zone. Again, if they're going to play zone for the Vulcans, you got to be able to capitalize on it. Jake Soy, nice job sitting in the zone, Bowles delivering a strike. Soy rewriting the record books. Here's another pitch. This one... Trying to get to the edge, and inside the five-yard line goes Jordan Simmons, the freshman from Kansas City. A gain of 10 for the Bearcats, and they're knocking on the door again, Ro. Well, I like the creativity of the play call. That guy, Simmons, has been doing a great job returning it. Now you just give him a little flipperation, get him out of space, let him get upside and make a play. But, ooh, can you tell what's the semifinals? Boy, those pads are popping. Josh Menendez. With the stop for Cal U, the senior who transferred in from Dayton. Former Flyer. But it's Northwest Missouri State with their high-flying offense looking to reclaim their lead. Here's another pitch. This time it's to Soy. And Soy backs his way in for the score. It'll go in the books as a four-yard touchdown pass from Blake Bowles to Jake Soy. Well, you know, we talk about the Bearcat offense being ranked third in the nation in scoring, third in passing efficiency. It's because they just have a lot of creativity. That time, you got to get your playmakers to football. Soy, you just saw him do the little underneath with Jordan Simmons. You come right back with Jake Soy. Nice play call, keeping the defense under heels. 25 touchdown catches on the season for the sophomore from Durant, Iowa. His second touchdown of the night. He's accounted for both. Bearcats scores on the receiving end from Junior Blake Bowles. The Bearcats are back in front. Fourteen to ten, Northwest Missouri State leads Cal U. Another touchdown reception for Jake Soy, his third grab of the night, his second touchdown, and now 25 touchdowns this season. That leads all of Division Two. Jake. Jake is playing spectacular football. I said when you take a look at his game, he shows you he can get it done in the passing game. He can get it done any way you want. Jake Soy, just a big-time playmaker. You know, we talked with the coach. He talked about his work ethic, and he's showing you he can get it done every which way but loose. And he told me if he has some success, say hello to his dad, Chris, his mom, Holly, and his three sisters. So I'm doing it. Hello, everybody. Your son and your brother is playing spectacular football. Don't sell him short. He's got five sisters. Five of them. As a matter of fact, the coaches said, we had to work some of that sister out of him, make him a little bit tougher when he showed up on campus. <laughs> Didn't want to teach out your sisters, Jake. <laughs> yeah, five sisters. That's a lot of sisters. Well, for all the latest news, stats, polls, and more, visit NCAA.com. NCAA.com is the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. 16 yard return that time for the running back Freddie Bacco, senior out of Baldwin High School in Pittsburgh. And this Cal U team rolling out of Western PA where they play some tremendous high school football. Yeah, you know, you talk about certain states that sort of epitomize football. You got to include Pennsylvania in that short list. And, and uh, ironically, a lot of guys on this football team don't come from Pennsylvania, but it's just a nice mixture of players that uh, the coach Luckhart is really proud of. 16-yard strike to the big receiver, A.J. Jackson. So, yeah, speaking of guys from not from Pennsylvania that make a lot of plays, nice job of getting going up top, A.J. Jackson making the play, and Portis taking the hit. Here's showing you again that mature leadership to hang in the pocket and deliver the bullet to your big play receiver. 
It was Josh Lawrenson who put Portis on his back. Josh Portis, six of seven for 70 yards. Backo in the game now. Play action to him. Portis goes over the middle, complete to Terrence Moore. The junior from Key West, Florida. That is the first catch of the game for the speedster Moore. Well, they said they clocked Terrence Moore at a 4.2. Okay, that's blazing speed. Tremendous job by Josh Portis, looking away off the safety, coming back across the green, delivering the strike. Terrence Moore, he's a guy that has great hands and pure speed, and that's a great compliment to number eight, A.J. Jackson, who caught the play before. Jackson big, more fast, exactly what you need when you're talking about your ride receiver core, which is a man down tonight. Chedrick Cherry, a sophomore from Cincinnati's Moeller High School, suffered a dislocated kneecap in practice this week. He did not dress tonight and is not likely to play. Backo with the carry that time, his first carry of the game for the product of Pittsburgh's Baldwin High School. Backo went for a career high last week against West Liberty. 17 carries, netted him 173 yards and two touchdowns, and a big 71-yard touchdown run for Backo. They say uh, Backo's, he's one of those lunch pail kids, you know, the kind that just come, they bring their hard hat to work every day and might not be the most fancy, glittery guy in the world, but you can count on him, rely on What a great compliment to uh, Wendell Brown, that backfield. Vivian, isn't everybody in Western PA lunch pail? How about this? Another lunch pail guy. Now, Miles Burnside thought he had the pick, but it hit the turf. Burnside with 16 career interceptions, a fingernail away from getting this one. Well, sometimes, you know, when you're running your offensive plays, it comes down to execution. And that time, unfortunately, A.J. Jackson couldn't bring that one in. The ball got popped up in the air. Usually that spells disaster for a, a defense, for an offense. That time Burnside just a, wow, a hair frolic away from getting that interception. Instant replay is in effect tonight in both national semifinals and the national championships for Division II. Tough opportunity over the middle, incomplete that time. Trying to find Terrence Moore and good coverage downfield by the Bearcats. You saw the replay that we showed you a moment ago. It was clear that the ball hit the turf and Miles Burnside did not haul it in. Here's a, another look at the ball that was bobbled and then Burnside's. Yeah, Burnside, again, being opportunistic. I know that A.J. Jackson is sort of kicking himself for letting that ball get away from him. Burnside didn't make the play, but he was in the right spot. That last throw by Portis was just him forcing it a little bit. You know, they say that he has a great arm, and sometimes he does that from time to time. He tries to make the spectacular throw. Nobody's going to open in the middle of the field. First punt of the game for either side. Simmons wanted the fair catch. It takes a high hop. It is... Down at the one. The player was in the end zone and tried to come back, and so it will be a touchback. I don't know. Yep. They'll bring it out to the 20. Well, definitely the, the punt was in the right mindset, but he has to realize you can't go into the end zone and come back. You got to. Field of awareness, an issue. <laughs> yeah. He got his feet down. He tried to make it pretty, but. So first and ten for Northwest Missouri State. Moran Council versus another big run. He takes it to the 30 for a gain of 10, and another Northwest Missouri State first down. Time for a Division II trivia. Who is the only other team to advance to the national semifinal in four straight seasons? Four straight seasons in the national semifinals. Hmm. Just like Northwest Missouri State. You got a hit for me? Um, yeah, they're no longer in Division II. It's a great hit. First and ten. Another running opportunity for Jordan Simmons. And Simmons picks up five on first down. Well, Simmons is a nice change of pace back. He's a speedster to go along with the power guy, Laurent Council. 
Well, you know, overall, you got to be impressed with the ground game if you're the Bearcats. The Ron Council came in, the sledgehammer sort of setting the tempo early, and now he sort of got some help. You know, Billy Creason came in, got some carries, Jordan Simmons. You know, this is running by committee right now for the Bearcats. Nearing 90 yards rushing in the first half already for Northwest Missouri State. Council gets tripped up by Rontez Miles, and he will lose yardage this time. It was Brett Diamond who came in to clean it up. Yeah, nice job again. You talk about that 4-2-5. What that allows is you have more guys that are in space that can spread out, get in there, and come make a play. That's You've seen Rontel's Miles. You know, he plays that nickel field side guy. He's the one that comes up and, try, and, and gets that initial slowdown and makes it difficult for Leron Council. But this is a nice job by the Vulcan defense seeing and closing that gap to make a play. There's a loss of six. Now third and ten as Soy motions out. Soy has a linebacker on him. Bowles trying to look that way, and he gets dropped for a loss. Consecutive negative plays. It was Willie Walker with the sack. The four-year starter making an impact. Willie Walker came and gave you a textbook swim move right there and just destroyed, and I do mean destroyed, Brett Grounzinger. Nice move, the acceleration to bring down the quarterback. Not much Blake Bowles could do when a big man like that gets the beat on you. That was one Gene Upshaw finalist going head-to-head -head with another. Grosinger has been slowed by an injury, and Walker took advantage. Fantastic punt this time from Michael Stadler, and it's taken for a fair catch at the 29-yard line. Well, this game is a lot going on. We talk about some of the big play receivers and defensive backs, but there's also a war going on inside. Nice job, Willie Walker. Showing 15. you some... You know, you watch that. He came with the inside move and just quickly got outside. Not much Brett could do on that one, number 70, for the Bearcats. You know, just a tremendous move by a, a Gene Upshaw finalist. It's the reason why he's fired up. He's excited. I think he actually <laughs> tweaked his I saw him limping off after he celebrated. Walker and Grosinger, two of the eight finalists for the Gene Upshaw Award. It's uh, awarded to the top linemen in Division Two. Nothing doing on the ground for Cal. No surprise there because Northwest Missouri State has shut down opponents' running games. They only allowed Abilene Christian 90 yards on the ground and forced three fumbles. And they've only allowed three teams this season to cross the century mark on the ground. How does Mel Churchman's defense do it, Ro? Well, they do it because they have a lot of meat and potatoes up front. You look at number 91, Tyler Roach. He's 315 pounds. Number 98, Shane Shade, 6'2", 300 pounds. These are some big boys up front. Tough to move out the way. A lot of shade behind Shane. Here is another run for a first down. Chad Kilgore with the stop on Freddie Bacco. Well, the numbers are impressive team-wise and shutting down individuals, and it's been a recurring theme for Northwest. They've only allowed three 100-yard rushers for running backs over the last 61 games. That's over four seasons. Only three running backs have gone over the 100-yard mark. You know, you got to give credit to a lot of people, starting with the head coach, Churchma, the defensive coordinator, Scott Boswick, all the assistant coaches, everybody involved. But, but it's people being in the right place at the right time, and that's what we got out of talking with them. And it was so funny, the defensive coordinator, Scott Boswick, says, I don't keep track of who got 100 yards, who didn't get yards. We just want our guys to play and get off the ball and hit people in the mouth. And, and, and everybody else can keep stats. So when we told him that little tidbit that nobody rushes for over 100 yards on him, he got a kick out of that stat. Clock management issues again, a problem for Cal. Boswick. Dead ball, the last game on offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Boswick wearing that red hat that typically matches his red face. He says, you know, I might get after my guys a little bit. I get the emotion on the coaching staff. Coach T is calm, cool, collected. I'm the guy that brings the fire. <laughs> well, I enjoyed talking with him. Tremendous guy. Very personable. You can tell his players really love being around him. Except for when they're messing up. First and long for Cal. Remember, they had to take that delay of game penalty. They don't have any timeouts left. They burned them all in the first quarter. Per Portis with the dance move. And loses three yards. 
Or pardon me, picks up a couple yards that'll leave second and long. Oh, I think that the Vulcans got away with a few little situations. One that seemed very illogical to me. See, like there was a little bit of holding on that left side. Shamar Jones maybe got away with a little WWF wrestling in that situation. Nice job by Porter, though. Again, being mature, guys not open. He just chose to take the ball down and try to pick up some yards. But uh, I think the guys up front got away with it. Second and 13 for Cal. They're quick to the line here. Play clock under five. It's been an issue all night for the Vulcans to get the plays off. Backus, Abacco, pardon me, on the ground. Picks up a yard and a half, and that will lead third and long. This is uh, an offensive coordinator, Mike Jacobs, who uh, coached under Don Nealon at West Virginia, John Cooper at Ohio State, then on to Oklahoma State and Mesa Community College in Roland. He told us yesterday, either you're 10 years ahead of the curve offensively or you're 10 years behind the curve. He said, I'm old school. Where I formation, I'm definitely 10 years behind the curve. But why are they having so much trouble getting the plays off against the play clock? Well, you know, it comes down to the quarterback communication with the offensive coordinator. You know, you got to get in and out these huddles quickly. It is a hostile environment, but the communication has to be succinct, has to be quick, and you got to get those linemen to hustle to the line of scrimmage to make a play. Portis fires one incomplete. He had Gumbert and Jackson in the area, and that'll bring up fourth down with Cal U trailing by four. So Scott Bostwick's defense holds, forces another punt, from Cal U. Well, in Josh Portis' defense, there's nobody open downfield. You know, you look and see the defense of the Bearcats, number three, Ryan Jones. You see guys like number eight, Foster Reddick. These people, guys are all over these receivers. There's nobody open for Josh Portis to deliver the ball to. He's doing a nice job, but not trying to force it in there and potentially cause a turnover. Neither team punted in the first quarter. Now three straight possessions have ended in a punt. And it takes a nice Vulcan roll all the way down to the 22-yard line. The winner goes to the national championship. And with 3-10 to go before the half, it's 14-10, Northwest Missouri State. 14-10, Northwest Missouri State with the lead following the punt. They will take over. Bobby the Bearcat is uh, got a little fan club going here tonight. The Northwest Missouri State mascot. A little antifreeze here in the stadium tonight. Bowles steps up, goes over the middle, complete first down and more. Tyler Shaw is off to the races and inside the 25 yard line. Well, Tyler Shaw looked like he was shot out of a cannon in that one. Can you tell why he's an All-American hurdler? Why he's a guy that the coaches talk about is just speed to go. Tremendous job by Blake Bowles rolling out, taking the defense, sucking him out, hole in the middle of the defense. Tyler Shaw being in the right place at the right time and showing the acceleration after the catch. Shot out of a cannon. Well, Five Sigma Cap is hoping to shoot their cannon off here in a moment. Bowles rolls. Pump fakes three times and lets it go incomplete. A wise play to avoid the sack. All right, time to put rolling on the hot seat. Who's the only other team to advance to the national semifinal in four straight seasons? Hmm. Would it be North Dakota? Oh. North Dakota State. Yeah, the Bison now part of the FCS competed in four consecutive D2 football championships. They also own the most D2 football national titles with five. My friend Phil Hansen played on that team before moving on to the Super Bowl with the Buffalo Bills. And that's a big time lick from Dante Brown and an incomplete pass. You know, Hansen played in the Super Bowl with the Bills four times. Sometimes people think that Northwest Missouri State are the Bills of D2. More on that after you listen to this. <laughs> Well, Dante Brown, the grad school leader, they call him the quiet assassin. He's going to find a way to get himself involved in the game, and by destroying a receiver is always a nice way to get noticed. Nice job. I'm going to ask you about the Bills in a moment. Third and ten, Bulls. Looking for Soy, incomplete. No flag in the play. Terrence Johnson was in Soy's hip pocket. What did uh, 
What did Scott Boswick tell us about <laughs> Mel, Mel Churchman's name in these parts? He said, well, sometimes they, they might change Mel to call him Marv, and sometimes the stadium might be known as Ralph Wilson. You know, some of the <laughs> local folks sort of give him a hard time for not capitalizing on their four opportunities. But, uh, you know, this, this team has shown great resiliency. And just like that Buffalo Bill team, if you can get – to an extreme level, the semifinals, the championships, uh, is spectacular. Fourth and ten, they're going to go for it without a kicking game. Bowles steps up. He's trying to scramble for the first down. Needs a block. Changes direction. Hits his own man's leg as he tries to dive forward. He needed to get just over the 15-yard line, and I think he got it with the extra effort. Roland, why are they going for it on fourth and ten? <laughs> well, you got, you got me. You got me. I just feel like the Bearcats right now, they have a kicker. You know what I mean? Why, why don't you take a shot at the kick? It's one of those times where I think the coach has a little bit more information than we do. Very courageous call on fourth and ten. Shocked me. Well, Bulls also is used as a punter in a shotgun formation, and that may have been a uh, an expected call. Their kicking game has been abysmal this season as they try to figure it out, and he was a foot short of the first down. Well, I, I, I'm just, I look and see their kicker is Todd Adolph. He's a freshman. You know, bottom line is there was, there was nobody that came open. It was a nice job by Bowles sort of trying to get out there and make a play with his feet. But uh, I don't know what that spot. Well, Bowles, with his extra effort, was trying to go forward at the end, and he ran right into left tackle Dane Wardenberg. It goes 6'7", 290, and that, I believe, is what kept him from picking up the first down. It's not where his feet are. It's where the ball is. When he's down, it looked to be a good spot. Well, I thought it was a great effort by the quarterback, but to me, a questionable call. I say give your freshman kicker a shot to, to put it through the upright. Turnover on downs for Cal U, and Portis will tuck it and run. And he picks up the first down. Here are the numbers now. Northwest Missouri State and their struggles this season with the kicking game. Flag on the play will bring this one back. Todd Adolph and Joe Schrader have shared the kicking duty. Schrader was injured preseason. He's attempted five kicks. So has Adolph. They're combined four of ten. That's last in the MIAA. Well... I guess that's the answer of why they went for it. Maybe a pooch kick? I don't know. On that penalty. A 16-yard gain is brought back after the penalty. Don't know. Robert Eberline. Okay, right in the center of your screen. Looks like that's where the whole thing came from. You see the quarterback taking in the running. The white shirts can't hold. Play action. Portis unloads incomplete. Miscommunication between Portis and Terrence Moore. And that was nearly a takeaway for Northwest Missouri State, a team which knows takeaways well. They're second in the nation with 24 picks on the season. Second and 18 coming up for Cal. A national semifinal. The winner gets a chance to go to Florence, Alabama, the perfect Division II vacation to play for a national championship. Cal, PA, and Northwest Missouri State going head-to-head, -head, and it's a 14-10 lead for the Bearcats. Portis from the end zone, complete. Finding the speedster Terrence Moore that time. Moore wanted a flag on a late hit. And Northwest is saying he was bobbling the ball going out of bounds. Regardless, Terrence Moore has shown tremendous speed rolling, and they that speed allows him to get open. Let's see if he was bobbling. Well, I don't know if he was bobbling. I think that was a good reception. Seemed to be out of bounds, but a nice job by Josh Portis. Just scan the field, having the ability to stand there in the pocket. He's His back is to the wall and just delivering the uh, perfect ball to the receiver. When Portis gets going, he is silky smooth, isn't he? He is sort of, he is sort of silky. 
you know, the grad school student, you know, he talked about when he's standing, has a chance to hang in the pocket and plant those feet. You know, he's as accurate as anybody in college football. You know, sometimes he has to improve when he's actually moving and moving in and outside the pocket. Those throws are a little bit tougher, but that time you had a chance to see him with his back to the wall, stop, pop, and hit his receiver. Well, the question about this completion to Terrence Moore, Roland, is if he made a football move after making the completion and then fumbled out of bounds. Obviously, the ball came out, but did he make a move after the catch? And in my mind, he did. Not only did he catch it, but he turned up field. What do you think? Absolutely. You saw those shoulders come around. He definitely progressed and took a step or two. Nice job by the referees calling it a completion. Northwest Missouri State used the timeout here. Remember, just a reminder, we have uh, instant replay rules in effect at the Division II level only for the national semifinals and for the national championship game. Steve Beckman is a replay official. He's out of the Big Ten. Third down. Portis steps up. Over the middle, complete to A.J. Jackson. And Jackson takes it to the 40. A.J. Jackson, a tremendous story. He was at College of the Sequoias and signed with Ed Orgeron and Ole Miss, ticketed to play in the SEC. But at the end of the semester, just two classes shy of graduating, his mother passed away. He said, I went back home. I fell into a funk for a couple of months. He failed to complete those two classes and credits. So therefore, he was ineligible to play in the SEC. And now at Cal U, he's got a new lease on his football life. First and ten for the Vulcans. Portis, pressure, steps up, has the legs, but gets tripped up just past the line of scrimmage. And Sean Paddock, the senior from Bettendorf, Iowa, was there for the stop. Yeah, for the Bearcats, that's the way to defuse Josh Portis in that offense is to get at his feet early and often. Nice job by Paddock and Roach in there really causes some havoc. Second down as Cal tries to scramble. Remember, no timeouts remaining. Jackson turned back towards the field instead of getting out of bounds. The clock will stop with the first down. The stop by Chad Kilgore, and Cal will try to hurry to get up to the line. Well, how did A.J. Jackson find his way to Cal? His cousin was not only playing at Cal U, but he had rewritten the, rewritten the record books. Marcel Pistano started his college career at Pitt. Pistano made the 33-mile drive down to California, Pennsylvania. And when A.J. was looking for a place to play, his cousins had come on over here. I don't you know. know. I feel number 89 was covered up. It's a five-yard penalty. Still second down. So that will cost Cal a big opportunity. Roe, to go back to that in a minute. I don't know if Marcel would have wanted A.J. to come if he knew he was going to take his name out of the record books. <laughs> and he's done a spectacular job of that. Look, take a look at this stuff. He's first in receptions, yards, touchdowns. Man, A.J. Jackson, bright future. To me, playing at the next level, he is truly an NFL prospect, but he's already done some amazing things here at Cal U. Tyler Roach found his way into the backfield. He said the old line moved. He was wrong. Look at Roach. <laughs> he, I, he wanted to take the direct snap. You see, you see a little extra that the defensive lineman Dead do. ball. Defense, all stop. Five, Still second down. I've seen, seen a lot of wildcat type formations. I've never seen a wild nose guard. Yeah. You know, Roaches know how to do stuff like that. Nice job, big man. Deep ball. Down the sideline. Incomplete. Trying to find Dominique Curry. Tremendous basketball player, Cheney in, Philly, in Pennsylvania. That leaves a third and eight now with less than 10 seconds left on the clock. How costly, Roland, was it to Cal to have to burn three timeouts in the first quarter? Well, I think that in, in retrospect, hindsight is always 20-20. There was obviously something there that either Josh Portis or the offensive coordinator, Mike Jacobs, felt they need to get slow it down and think things out a little bit. But right now, when you see a, a 10 to 14 score, you know these are two teams that do a lot of things right. It's going to come down to execution, and I think that this is a time where this you have to be cautiously courageous right now in this situation with only nine seconds left. 
and they fail to get a playoff again. That was why they used three timeouts on one drive. It's going to be one of the many things they talk about at halftime. I think this is the smart decision. Just kneel it down. A spectacular first half. Very competitive, but still a lot to improve upon if you're the Vulcan offense. Well, they had an opportunity to find a score, but instead, consecutive penalties back took a 10-yard gain off the board and then back Cal up. And Northwest Missouri State wants to use a timeout here with seven and a half seconds to go. Why not? It's their last timeout of the half. What's the purpose of the timeout here? This, that's their last timeout. All, all Cal would have to do on third down, or pardon me, fourth down. So there is an opportunity now to get the ball back. Well, you the know, clock will stop with a change of possession, so you can't just run around for five seconds and wait for it to tick off. Well, the winner of this game goes into the national championship, and that means that you're going to do everything you can to have success. So if you have another timeout left, use it. You never know. I've seen crazy things happen in college football with a few seconds and a simple center quarterback exchange. Fourth and 15 coming up as these two teams work for the opportunity to play for a national title. Grand Valley State will be there. They dispatched Carson Newman out of Jefferson City, Tennessee. And so they will be the home team in the championship game in Florence, Alabama, and take on the winner of Cal U or Northwest Missouri State. So a half plus seven and a half seconds to determine that. You know, when you play on any level in any sport and you have a chance to play in a national championship, there's no greater honor. I had a chance to play in a couple Super Bowls. It was spectacular, and it's the same feeling that these young men have out in this football field right now. They're laying on the line to get this game in the record books. They come after the punt and block it. And look at this. Northwest Missouri State will scoop and score with no time left on the clock in the first half. We said that anything can happen, and obviously the coach, wow. Churchma, hats off to him for making the timeout a spectacular special team play. That's a difference maker in a game of this magnitude. Billy Creason picked it up, a 35-yard return after Roberto Davis blocked it. For Cal U, a complete meltdown on special teams. You cannot go to sleep for any amount of time in a game of this magnitude. That's horrible if you're Cal U right now, but for the Bearcats, what an outstanding opportunity capitalized on. A costly mistake for Cal U, and the extra point is good. An unbelievable turn of events and momentum seized by Northwest. Why aren't they in max protection? Well, they should be, and, and the guys up in that second line back there were just too passive. You got the Bearcats running at you full speed. You got to step in and make contact. Just a horrible job of giving fundamental protection. Great job by the Bearcats. The Bearcats take advantage. We're at the half in Maryville and coming up, Adam Zucker is back in our New York studios. The Talk Division II football Central Oklahoma head coach Calvin Miller will be alongside and we'll take a look at our first half highlights. Momentum squarely in the locker room of Northwest Missouri State on this blocked punt to close the first half. You want to talk about a way to give momentum to somebody? That is how you do it. Special teams paying huge dividends for the Bearcats. Complete meltdown for the Vulcans. Northwest Missouri State used a block kick to seal their win last week against Central Washington with no time left on the clock. And then here tonight, they close the first half with a block kick to add to a score. Tom Hart, Roland Williams up in the booth, happy to be joined by head coach Mel Churchma down on the field. Coach, momentum's a silly thing in college football. Do you think you guys have it now headed to the locker room? Well, we got it right now. We got to see what happens when we come back out. That was a huge play for us. Uh, you know, we've stopped ourselves a couple of times. They really haven't stopped us defensively. So, uh, uh, you know, we just, we just got to keep rolling. We got to get some stops on defense. 
Coach, talk about the play of Blake Bowles in the first half and doing a tremendous job. What do you feel about that he has to do to continue to progress in the second half? Well, we're, he's in a little bit in a hurry sometimes with our with our checks, and it's cost us a couple of times. He's just got to relax. He's really excited about this game, and he's playing great, but he's just got to slow down a little bit at times. Coach, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. That's the winningest coach in Division II postseason history, Mel Churchma, and he's there for a reason. On a gorgeous night in Maryville, the home crowd can hit the half happy. A scoop and score off a block punt with no time remaining, and Maryville has the momentum. Bearcats with the lead at the break. And we welcome you back to Maryville, Missouri. We're at the half. It's a 21 to 10 lead for Northwest Missouri State over the Cal U Vulcans as these teams prepare to play for the right to go to a national championship. Tom Hart up in the booth, happy to be joined now by the Director of Athletics here at Northwest Missouri State, Dr. Bob Bo Richter. And I know it's an exciting time to be part of this campus. And it's a campus and enrollment that in these days just continues to grow. Well, it does, and we're very excited about that. We had a record enrollment this year, and there's a, we think, a number of things for that. One is uh, we've been able to keep our tuition at a very manageable level. Second, every student that attends Northwest gets a laptop computer for their use, as well as their textbooks are included in their tuition fee. Uh, in addition to that, this is just a great place to go to school. We have a large university amenities available to us, but we have a small college feel. Uh, you know, we play great football on a Saturday, fun to be a part of that. We have a great Greek system. Students love to be involved in those activities, but a tremendous teaching faculty that really gives a personal touch to the students. And so uh, our alumni have a great loyalty to this institution. And in all the years that I've been here, I've only had one student athlete in my office that ever told me he didn't like going to school here. <laughs> Well, not only do they produce great players, but also students who graduate. And I know one of the thrills in the MIAA have been, has been the annual game at Arrowhead Stadium between Northwest and Pittsburgh State. And you just told me that that's a unique tradition that will continue. We certainly hope it will. It, uh, it began when this facility was under construction. And we knew we were going to play Pitt State for homecoming that year. And we were going to be unable to really hold a crowd. So I suggested to the president we look at some other venues. He asked me, what did I have in mind? I said, I'm going to talk to Arrowhead, talk to the Chiefs. I think he, he, probably, he probably thought he'd never hear from me again. <laughs> uh, we found out that Lamar Hunt and Carl Peterson, the general manager, were great friends of college football, had 26,000 that first game. The next year, the Chiefs invited Pitt to come back and be the host institution. And since that time, we have been true partners. We share the work. We share the benefits, we share the risk, and we share the rewards. It's been really fun. And tremendous rewards. That was a Division II record attendance the first year at Arrowhead Stadium. Dr. Bob, thanks for being with us. Appreciate it. Thanks for letting us be your guests this weekend. Thank you. It's been great to have you here. All right, and it's been a great game thus far. A thrilling first half ends with a block punt touchdown for Northwest Missouri State. More to come from Maryville right after this. What makes at the half 21 to 10 Northwest Missouri State with the lead over Cal U Tom Hart and Roland Williams up in the booth happy to be joined down on the field by Cal U head coach John Lockhart coach uh, tremendous momentum play for Northwest going into the break what did you tell your kids in the locker room well you got to go back as I said I screwed that up uh, I, I, I wanted to get out at the half and and to their credit they they took a timeout and blocked the kick we got to come back it's got to be 0-0, and we got to come play our football. We can play with these guys. It's a hell of an outfit, but we're uh, we're a good football team. We're going to have to come back and play our fanning off and, uh, and and outscore them in the second half. Coach, what are you telling them about a way to stop this running attack? LeRon Council, these guys run the football. What, what advice did you give that defense for the second half? Well, we've got to keep mixing it up. They're doing a good job uh, in terms of they're, they're reading our fronts, that, which they do very well, and then they're checking the play. So we're trying, we're going to try to show something and then get out of it and move into something else. But they're a heck of an offense. Coach, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Thanks, Tommy. That's head coach John Luckhart at Cal U. 205 career wins. He's looking for a big second half from his Vulcans. 21 to 10. More after this. After dropping their first two games of the season, the Cal U Vulcans have rebounded in a monster way. They've won 11 
of their last 12. They're in their third straight semifinal appearance, and they need a second half to overtake Northwest Missouri State to make it to the national title game. For the fifth straight season, Northwest is in the national semifinals under the winningest coach in Division II history who looks for his third Division II national title. Here's a look at the first half stats. Tom Hart and Roland Williams in the booth. And even though Cal has dominated time of possession, the clock has been their enemy. Yes, the bottom line is that in these kind of games, it goes to the person who can make the most plays. And right now, it's the Bearcats. They're maximizing their opportunities and turning them into points. Let's look at the first half highlights. And it was a tremendous half of football for Northwest. Well, one of their special playmakers, Jake Soy, showed that he, why he is looked at as one of the best receivers in Division II. Showed he can get it done in the passing, and also he can get it done in the ground. Tremendous job. But the key to this game was the lackluster special team play of the Vulcans. Late in the second half, the block by the Bearcats turned it into what I want to call the biggest play in the first half. Tremendous job by the Bearcats maximizing a crease of opportunity with special teams. And now that they have the lead at the break, Northwest Missouri State has dominated the season in the third quarter. And so you figure that more of the same has been ordered up. They have outscored their opponents 122 to 11 coming out of the Interesting conversation with head coach John Luckhart of Cal U moments ago and Roland he said that mistake was on me instead of running the ball on third down and maybe burning a few more seconds they took a knee Northwest still had a timeout they were able to stop the clock with seven seconds left put in their punt block team and it paid off as a football team how do you carry momentum out of the locker room and back on the field for the second half? <laughs> well, for the Vulcans, first off, tremendous job by Coach Luckhart taking the rap for that one. But at the end of the night, the special team guys have to do their job. The second line of the Vulcans had to step up and defend that. Congratulations, Coach. Thanks for taking the rap. But your players got to make the plays. Here's Freddie Bacco on the return for Cal U. Breaks an arm tackle at the 25, tries to find the corner, and he's wrestled down on the special team's tackle after a 19-yard return for the Vulcans. You know, you asked about momentum coming back after the half. These are two teams that have been tested. These are battle-tested teams. This is the semifinals. The winners going to the national championship game. The character, the, the heart, the determination of both of these teams is not in question. And we know a player like Josh Portis definitely has what it takes to bring his team back in the second half. Josh Portis was Urban Meyer's first recruit to the University of Florida when Tim Tebow arrived on campus. Portis left for Maryland. Pass blocked at the line of scrimmage by six foot four inch Kyle Sunderman. Then after a couple of seasons in the Maryland program, he transferred to Cal. He's passed for over 3,000 yards this season, but struggling to get his passing game going tonight. Well, when you're struggling to get your passing game going, you can still be involved in the passing game. That drill where the defensive linemen get those big, long, lanky arms up and out of the way, and that's a nice job of getting in the passing lane of Josh Portis. He saw a receiver open, but there's nothing when a big guy gets those bear paws up. Portis played high school ball at William Howard Taft High School in Woodland Hills, California. Northwest shows blitz. They bring an extra man. Portis stands tall, fires a timing pattern towards A.J. Jackson, which falls incomplete. Ryan Jones had the coverage for the Bearcats. Third and ten now for Cal. Portis was four of eight passing. a hot start to this game. Well, I saw a little bit of frustration on the face of Josh Portis. You know, that was an opportunity for him with A.J. Jackson on the outside. Ran a nice outcut. I know he wants that ball back. He has to maximize every single chance to connect with his big play receiver. They've converted 50% of their third downs tonight. Portis sacked! Northwest, that line comes up to swallow him. Tyler Roach, a senior from Elkhorn, Nebraska. 
with his eighth tackle for a loss this season. Well, that was a, just a green avalanche. Guys coming in there, a nice stunt inside, the ET stunt. You saw number 94, Kyle Sunderman working inside with Roach. Nice pressure by number 50, Chad Kilgore. But that's just a total defensive effort. The guys moving around, making it tough for the white shirts to get a beat on. A loss of nine. The Bearcats have already blocked one, and they almost got a second. Takes a hop at the 50. Simmons fights through a tackle. And he has a six-yard return to set up the offense, some extra pushing and shoving at the end of this play. Well, Tyler Shaw came off the edge, and row he almost got one. Yeah, you, you look on the right side of the screen. You see, I think that's nice. Is it looks like it's, is it, who's that? It's Tyler it's, Shaw. It's Tyler Shaw. You got to step and be aggressive if you're on the Vulcan side of the special teams. You got to step into those guys. You can't be poised and sort of wait back on your heels. When a guy's running 10 to 15 yards directly at you with plenty of speed, and Tyler Shaw, Shaw has a lot of it, you got to step up, man. You got you got to step up and be aggressive at point of contact. And here's LaRon Council with another big gain on first down. Uh, you know, Cal talked to us about the importance of slowing down the running game. And for the most part, Roe, it seems that with big first down gains from guys like Council, Northwest Missouri State has stayed ahead of schedule most of the night. Yeah, you know, when you have a running game, it always causes problems for a defense. They can't quite get a bead and focus down on one guy on Soy, on Shaw because of the counteraction. It's just a nice play calling by the Bearcats mixing things up and keeping the defense on their heels. Kyle Kilgore with the catch at time, the tight end for a first down. They set that play up with the run on first down from LaRon Council, who for the second straight season led the MIAA in rushing, and this year was named their Offensive Player of the Year. Well, I just like the mobility and keeping the thing, keeping the defense in their heels. You got a guy like Kyle Kilgore who hasn't got a whole lot of receptions. He's a first-year starter, only 19 catches. Now he's involved in the offensive attack. That's just one more thing for the Vulcan defense to have to pay attention to. Council forced out of bounds by Brett Diamond that time. As they look to the work, workhorse, Laron Council. Mel Churchman said, I, I feel sorry for Laron. We're not running the ball as often this year as we did last year. Offensive Player of the Year in a tremendous running league, the MIAA. Last year, he went for 1,739 yards and 36 touchdowns. Here's Council on the screen. Big boys in front. It frees him down the sideline. And all the way down to the five goes Laurent Council before Marcus Cook popped him out of bounds. Terrence Johnson also there for Cal U. And it's a gain of 18. And Council gingerly returns to his feet. Well, he's ginger, but congratulations to the offensive coordinator, Adam Durrell. Nice job of just giving you the fake, showing you to the strong side, coming back with the weak side screen. I saw a caravan of love, green shirts out in front, big guys knocking people out. Council, the benefactor of an excellent play call. Council goes to the sideline for this play. They hand off inside, touchdown, Bearcats, Billy Creason. Well, this is what the Vulcans didn't want to have starting, letting these big guys up front for the Bearcats start knocking them off the ball. You know, they are they do outweigh them by a little bit, and right now I'm starting to see the, the green shirts starting to open up holes. They're getting wider and wider. That time, Billy Creason has a chance to benefit from some gaping holes the fresh, in that Vulcan defense. A freshman from Grain Valley, Missouri, with his fourth rushing touchdown of the season. The extra point added by Omaha freshman Todd Adolph. Northwest Missouri State scored to close the first half. Their first drive of the second half results in a touchdown plunge. ML Churchman's Bearcats thinking about Florence already. A five play, 44 yard drive, only a minute 14 off the clock after the defense forced a three and out. And the second touchdown for Billy Creasy. It is a chilly, chilly night. Wind chill at 22 degrees, crisp and clear. And it doesn't seem to bother any of the Northwest fans at Mel Church Mafield tonight. Bobby the Bearcat staying warm in his Santa suit. That's a new look. Terrence Johnson back to receive this kick for the Vulcans. The sidewinder that goes over Bacco's head and into the end zone. Well, here we are in the holiday season, and Bobby the Bearcat ready to celebrate. That block punt was a stocking stuffer to end the first half, and then Northwest was back at it moments ago, Ro. 
Well, you got to appreciate the big guys up front. Look to the left of your screen, 77, Wardenberg and Callaway knocking people off the ball. Just a tremendous job of the green shirts pushing back that Vulcan defense, really open up the gaps. When offensive linemen are working in unison, getting those combo blocks, coming off the linebackers, it really opens up a lot of holes. If the Vulcans don't start doing something about this one in this next series, it's going to be open season with the ground game for the Bearcats. Tight end motion to the opposite side. That's Blake Williamson. He was a threat in the first half. The toss to Brown. And Wendell Brown gets stripped up and loses a yard for the junior out of Duquesne, Pennsylvania. Justin Welch in there for the stop. Well, you know, defensively for the Bearcats, they talked about spreading things out, making the open tackle when you're in space. That's a tremendous job by Justin Welch. You know, staying in contain, being poised, waiting for it to come to him, and then attacking, closing that space up and wrapping those ankles up. Second and a long 10 for the Vulcans. They went three and out last time. Got to find a way to get A.J. Jackson back involved in his football game. Here comes the blitz again. Vulcans pick it up, and they fire a strike to Jackson, and that's good for a first down. The timing routes have been off just a little bit, but that toss was on the money. Yeah, you know, A.J. Jackson, he's six foot six, 238 pounds. He is a physical mismatch anytime he's in single coverage. And so I think they're thinking, just like me, Josh Portis, get the ball to A.J. Jackson whenever he's out there in single coverage. Nobody can do anything about it. It's pitch and catch. If they want to keep single coverage, I say throw him the ball six, seven times straight until they get somebody else over there to slow him down. That was a gain of 15 that time for the Vulcans. Northwest defensive coordinator Scott Bostwick said, hey, we're going to have to take some chances. I'm going to bring my guys. That's how we play. They bring them again, an extra man coming. Portis trying to roll away from the pressure. Floats one towards his man Jackson. It was knocked away at the last moment by Ryan Jones. Well, I think that ball was a little bit behind him. You know, we talked with the defensive coordinator for the Bearcats, Scott Boswick. He said, when you get Portis moving, get him moving outside, he's not quite as accurate. That time, that ball was a little bit behind Jackson. You see inside, they come with a nice pressure. You see Kilgore, number 50, trying to get it. Again, he's out in space. Look at him. He has to move his feet. He's throwing off of his back shoulder. That's not the optimal opportunity for Portis to be throwing the football. And you see him trying to get the ball to Jackson. Look, that ball is just a little bit behind. Almost a circus catch by Jackson. Portis now 10 of 19 through the air. Design quarterback draw and picks up just a couple, which will leave third down coming up. You know, you talk about football intelligence, the linebackers of the Bearcats. There's a reason why these teams are in the semifinals. They know how to play. They did a nice job of sniffing that one out. 56, Adam Drunk, Bondrack, Chad Kilgore, impressive linebacker group. Sniffing out some of those nifty little plays. Third and eight. Do Bearcats sniff things out? Is that how they hunt? Yeah, something Look, like that. Looking for those truffles. Pass complete. Knee was down, but it's enough for the first down to Josh Gumbert. Just the eighth catch of the season for the Beaver Falls native. But it's, once again, enough to move the chain. Marcus Martin was there. Well, he, he's another one of those weapons. Shorthanded receiver has a knack for picking up the first downs. But you see that knee hit. It's a nice call by the referee. He was down, but he did a nice job of getting the appropriate amount of yards. You can't say that enough. Receivers have to run their route and get the appropriate amount of yardage to pick up the first. Looked like he got it, even though we got to get a measurement. It was third and eight. And so if they don't get it, it would set up a fourth and very short. Premature to ask you if they'd go for it because it doesn't matter. They got it. But it, it goes to the bigger picture. Down 18, 10.33 to go. Northwest Missouri State showing no signs of slowing down. At what point does Cal need to throw caution to the wind? Well, I think that time is, is getting close to now. You know, the reality is, is that the Vulcans have a pretty darn good offense led by that guy right there, Josh Portis. You know, they know how to make plays. And you're seeing a guy like Josh Gumbert come clean open. A.J. Jackson, the play before. Terrence Moore, early in this football game, was playing great. You just got to get back to giving your playmakers a chance to go make plays. And the guys up front got to give them time to do that. Here comes the blitz again. Portis has the ball knocked away. He'll scoop it up and try to make something out of nothing and wisely chucks this one to the cheerleaders. 
to leave him just second and ten. Well, that was a headsy play, way to try to turn something <laughs> into something. Tremendous, great job by Shane Say, number 98, coming in, picking that ball out. But headsy by Mr. Portis to pick the football up. He, you saw him look, he was still looking downfield instead of just looking to run the ball. He, he got his eyes upfield, trying to look for a receiver downfield and wisely threw it away. Portis has been struggling on these possessions in the second half, just two of seven for 24 yards. Jackson and Gumbert here ha each have a catch here in the second half. Down by 18. Cal's offense was fantastic last week. Can they channel some of that? Brown gets a great block on the edge from Jackson. Picks up a few more yards. And the spot looks like we'll give him a first down. Well, you talk about your team sort of coming together. That was a nice job. Wendell Brown getting a nice pickup chip block by his buddy, A.J. Jackson. Out there in space, giving it up to help his buddy gain some extra yards. Time out for measurement. They're going to take time to measure this one, but rolling the bottom line is we've seen a different Josh Portis since the opening quarter. Remember, he came out, and just like Bowles on the other side was on fire, he completed his first four passes for 49 yards as Cal settled for a field goal on their first possession and then scored. Since then, he's just 7 of 17. Well, the big difference is pressure. I mean, the Bearcats have done what they wanted to in the second half, being creative, come with more blitzes. You see number 50, Chad Kilgore, getting a chance to come and blitz, mixing things up. The secondary led by Burnside. These guys are giving limited opportunities from the look downfield. Sean Paddock, Roach, Shade. I mean, the Bearcats are causing some of these mistakes and, 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 and no offense to a quarterback, but when you don't have that much room to breathe and your receivers aren't open, it's tough to, you know, it's tough to produce. Third and one coming up, but it's uh, been the type of pressure that would burst pipes coming from the Bearcats. Yeah, you know, when you look at the pressure, the pressure's been coming from all over the place. Look at Porter's. He's scrambling around, man. It's all these green shirts. It's the green machine. You got the defensive lineman getting the ball, putting the hands up. Then, oh, my goodness, what all that weight, 300 and something pounds. Good gracious. They're getting through. I mean, it's, they're just swarming all over the place. Congratulations, defensive coordinator Scott Boswick. They're doing a nice job. Third and short, change of direction for Wendell Brown. And Mr. Wendell picks up a first down as the Vulcans continue on this drive. This Northwest Missouri State defense, Roland, leads the nation, only allowing 17.4 points a game. They're second in the nation in picks. They're eighth in the nation in yards allowed a game. And they're second in the nation with 43 sacks coming into this one. Yeah, you know, when you have a defense that can sack you, intercept the ball, that's a dynamo defense. Portis complete to Terrence Moore. And Moore has a first down, down to the 22-yard line. Terrence Moore coming out of Key West High School in Florida, and then Mesa Community College originally signed with West Virginia as one of the fastest receivers in college football. Now he's hobbled. Well, he has blazing speed, and he just came down in that zone in the pocket, and that's what it's going to take to get them back in this football game. you got to try to get your receivers out in space, but offensive linemen, you got to give your quarterback time to produce. And, and right now, Portis is showing you that if you give him some time, he can deliver to the right receiver. Under nine minutes to go in the third quarter as the Vulcans try to answer... 21 unanswered points for Northwest Missouri State. Shane Shade finds his way into the backfield, and it's a loss of three. Is there a better name for a big guy than Shade? <laughs> well, it, 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 right now, you know, he's showing you why that 300 pounds, why he's one of the better defenders in college football. You know, he's just crossing face right now. This is a 300-pounder right now, showing you the agility of a light cat, not a bear cat. He's a lighter cat. Nice job crossing face, getting to the running back. You know, when the big boys are moving and playing like that, it makes it tough. What, a meerkat? Is a meerkat more agile than a bear cat? <laughs> I don't know. He's a light cat. Portis, cool cat, goes deep to the end zone. Touchdown, Vulcans. A.J. Jackson, his 100th touchdown, 100th catch of the season, and his 15th touchdown. 
Well, one of the things that A.J. wanted to do is, of course, make a lot of plays for his football team. And also, he wanted to give a present to his dad. His dad's having a birthday, and his dad said, all I want for my birthday from you, son, is a touchdown on national TV. There you go, dad. Happy birthday. A.J., nice job. Your team needs you on that one. Tremendous athletic ability on that wide receiver. Extra point. Nearly hits the camera. It's banged through by Demonkis. And some banged up Vulcans trying to stay healthy to hopefully lead a comeback for Cal U. Portis to Jackson for the 18th time this season. It's an 11 point game in Maryville, Missouri after an 11 play 80 yard drive for the Vulcans of Cal U. 430 off the clock and a 25 yard strike from Portis to Jackson. Boy, this, you showed, saw the perseverance of Josh Portis hanging in there. A lot of pressure. He taking some sacks, having to scramble. But when the opportunity came, he delivered the perfect ball to A.J. Jackson over top. You see him tonight, 180 yards. He's just doing whatever's necessary to win this football game. I'm impressed with his performance, even though he's had a lot of pressure in his face. He passed Kevin McCabe, who directed this offense 3,214 3, yards last year. Like McCabe, Portis a transfer out of the ACC. McCabe came from Virginia and rewrote the record books. And now Portis, just a year later, has done the same under first-year offensive coordinator Mike Jacobs. You know, Josh talked about how happy he is to be playing Division II football. He chose Division II, and he's proud of his decision-making. And right now he's honored to have a great showcase to show off his skill sets. to go. Cal U, after they kick this off, will need a stop. Easier said than done against the Bearcats. Simmons from the 19. Simmons, full head of steam to the 40 and more. To midfield, Jordan Simmons on the run, and he takes it all the way. An 81-yard return for Jordan Simmons. Rocket fuel for Simmons. He just turned it on when he got to midfield. You want to talk about a way to neutralize any kind of momentum from your opponent. It's return a kick in that spectacular fashion. The guys up front did block a little bit, but that was single-handedly a Jordan-esque effort by Mr. Simmons to deliver the strike for the Bearcats. Another special team score for the Bearcats of Northwest Missouri State. The extra point sneaks in from Adolph. It's the first career kick return touchdown for the freshman at a Lee Summit North High School, Jordan Simmons. Well, he's been knocking on the door all game. Every return, he's been a step away. This time, you see him following the block, and then he just gave you some, wow, some... Wow, gave him the business, just shaking and baking, guys. You know, he just exploded so fast. I don't think the Vulcans were ready. They need to shift their, the Vulcans need to shift their uh, phasers to stun mode or something. They got to do something. They are stunned. Yeah. It's the first kick return for a touchdown since Tyler Shaw took one back 92 yards against Truman in September. That was a 70 to nothing run. 81 yard return for the fantastic freshman Simmons. He looked like he was in warp speed yeah. against the Vulcans. Trekkie? Yeah. Well, second place is a place <laughs> Northwest doesn't want to be. They've been there, done that four straight seasons. They've endured heartbreak in Florence, Alabama. With 7.56 to go in the third quarter and a commanding lead, they think they're ready to get back to Florence. Well, you know, both of these teams, spectacular seasons. You know, we're down to the final four. We're down to the last four teams in Division Two. Both teams truly exceptional. Right now, the Bearcats seeming as though they're just a little bit more focused and hungry to get to this national championship game. Went through Freddie Backo's five hole and so they're bringing it out to the 20 yard line. NCAA football fans visit NCAA.com or call 256-764-4661 to purchase tickets for next week's Division II football championship game in Florence, Alabama. 
I mean, you'd think the Northwest faithful would already know the roads to get there. The last five national champs, the last two have come through Cal U, Minnesota Duluth and Valdosta State each beat Cal U in the semifinals. Grand Valley State will be there again. They look to add their third in the last five years. Left side for Baca and a few. One of the reasons why I love Division II football is because when you get a national champion, you know they are the national champions. I love the playoff concept. You know, sometimes people talk about things that's going on in different leagues, and you see this stuff happening in crazy conference, the SEC and all that. Man, you never know who's the true champion. I love this about Division II. You know exactly who's the best team in the nation when this playoff system is over with. It can be a grind, that's for sure. But Mel Churchman's team with the playoff experience, the one-loss season allowed them to be at home tonight instead of on the road. Ford is trying to get it going, try to fit one into Terrence Moore. Tremendous coverage from cornerback E.J. Hawkins out of Austin, Texas. <laughs> well, I, I saw that when E.J. Hawkins might have got away with one. That's a senior move right there, the first-year starter, showing you a savvy play out of def at the defensive back position because I think he got a little hand, a little tug involved in there on Terrence Moore. But hey, if you get away with it, it works. Third down. The toss to Baca. And Baca tried to cut back inside. It'll leave fourth and one. 7 one to go and counting. Does Cal have to go for it here, or do you risk just uh, giving it back to Northwest with great field position? Well, you know, right now, you know, again, when you look at the offense, the strength of this football team is offense. So if I'm the Vulcans, I believe my team can get one yard, but obviously right now the coach doesn't feel the same sentiment, especially with the special team play of my punt team. They aren't necessarily the first unit I want out there, unfortunately. I hope that the guys in the second line for the Vulcans got a good tongue lashing. Step up and block somebody. Don't let them get to your punter. Already one pump block, one kickoff return for a touchdown. And the ball will roll inside the 40. 6.15 to go in the third quarter. Well, the history has been unkind to Northwest Missouri State in their trips to the recent national title games. In 2005, a loss to Grand Valley State. 2006, again, back-to-back -back national titles for the GLIAC. They lost to Valdosta in heartbreaking fashion as Valdosta came from behind. Here is Council, and Council stays inbounds, takes it all the way to the 30. A 32-yard run on first down for the senior Laurent Council. Brett Diamond with the stop. Well, doesn't this show the perseverance and the heart of this Bearcat team? You know, I'm seeing some heart out of LeRon Council. This is a guy that's an intelligent player. He's been battling All-American. He's just showing you that heart and that grit. Just continues to run the ball extremely hard Count against a Vulcan defense that's been pretty well. Council was a monster in the semifinal game last year against Northern Alabama. 139 yards and four touchdowns. Bowles, rolls, and off the hands of Jake Soy. That is a rarity. Hit him right in the hands. Here's a guy, Jake Soy, who works so hard to work on his hands and improving his pass catching ability. Roland, you were a receiver, okay, a tight end, but a receiver nonetheless in the NFL. Yeah, I caught one every now and then. Soy goes to the racquetball courts here on campus and tosses the ball against the wall just to work on hand-eye coordination. Council now will take the direct snap. Bowles split out wide. Council keeps it himself on the zone read, and he gets tripped up. So I want to ask you what, how that helps a wide receiver in terms of working on that hand-eye coordination. 5.30 to go in the third quarter. Number 22, Cal U. And number two, Northwest Missouri State fighting for a reservation in Florence, Alabama 
to play for the national title next week. Tom Hart and Super Bowl champ Roland Williams. How can a wide receiver work on his hands, and how do those kind of drills help Jake Soy? It's all about getting repetitions if you're a wide receiver. In fact, any position in football, it's all about getting repetitions. And sometimes when you're by yourself, you might not have a chance for somebody to throw you to football. Kids at home, you see Jake Soy, he goes to the racquetball court. He can bounce the ball against each other, work on that hand-eye coordination, the quickness, the eyes, getting all that stuff to work in unison. It reminds me of a great wide receiver I had a chance to play with named Torrey Holt. This guy worked extremely hard in his hands on the off days, and that extra work is what makes you a great one, and we see why Jake Soy is so darn good. He works really hard. They go for it on fourth down again. Double move to Soy. Touchdown, Bearcats! A fourth down conversion. Bulls to Soy. And a 23-yard score. Well, you see how we talked him into a touchdown? Jake Soy showing you why he's one of those big-time receivers. Fourth down, they're winning, but this is playing for a national championship. They're going to keep the heat going high. Tremendous job by Jake Soy getting open, popping open, and a nice job by Blake Bowles being mobile and delivering the strike. Todd Adolph with another extra point for Jake Soy. His sixth game this season with three touchdowns or more. Shake and bake indeed. Blake to Jake. Bearcats on a roll tonight in Maryville. Flex off going on here in Maryville, 42 to 17. The Vulcan may be stronger, but Bobby, Bobby the Bearcat's got some dance moves that he is anxious to show off. He's shed the Santa Claus outfit, and now he's ready to uh, to get it on. And so are the Bearcats, who are firmly in control of this one. Jake Soy has been a rocket tonight. His sixth game with three or more touchdown receptions. And the sophomore out of Durant, Iowa, who was strictly a role player last year, couldn't find the field because of injuries. And he is having an All-America type season and a big time night tonight. Backo has a burst and he takes it out to the 40. Roland, they've come early, they've come often, and they've come in different manners tonight. Well, Jake Soy has shown you he has the sauce to be the boss. You know, he showed you the outside release going up top in the end zone. It was nice. Then he showed you the flipperation underneath. Jake Soy finding a way to get in the end zone, but he's not done. Blake Bowles knows who the guy to go to in crucial situations. Who's that? Jake Soy. He has the sauce, and he's the man. He's getting it done. Uh, I'm very impressed with this young man, and he still has a few years left to play uh, for the Bearcats. Well, Soy told us yesterday that there's one particular person that he wanted to play this game for to offer encouragement and he's giving plenty to his teammates tonight as Portis scrambles and will pick up the first down in a few more back in his hometown of Durant Iowa one of his basketball coaches was Josh Miller and now Miller was in a car accident suffered a family tragedy where he lost his wife she lost her unborn baby and his other child was suffered major major injuries and was in critical condition Josh Miller continues to rehab and Jake told us yesterday if I can offer encouragement to a coach who offered and often encouraged me then maybe I can help out that one person who will be watching tonight so you know from us in the booth and our entire crew to Josh Miller get well soon keep working hard your guy soy is certainly working hard and shows some of that same character and class that we talked about at the beginning with Mel Churchman. You know, guys just play with so much heart, so much dedication, and when you have a head coach that says he's one of the best receivers I've ever seen, and you have some of his, his teammates, you know, ask guys like the Ron Council, guys like Blake Bowles, you know, ask them about Jake Soy, and, and they just had just a laundry list of compliments to say how good uh, this young man is as a player and as a person. Hats off to him, and he deserves everything he's getting tonight. He earned it. Second and 11. Short hop to A.J. Jackson. You know, Jackson has had a strong night tonight, Row. Six catches for 100 yards. Over 100 catches, or right at 100 catches for the season for a guy who initially signed with Michigan State 
and then with Ole Miss after junior college. Is, is A.J. Jackson an NFL caliber receiver? 100% yes. The guy is 6'6", he's 238 pounds. That is humongous with great body control. You know, you talk about the guys and sometimes those big guys can't run good routes. I saw him out there early in warm-ups. The guy can run routes. He has consistent hands and just a, a fighting attitude. His, his teammates, they, his nickname is Juice. And he definitely has plenty of juice to get it done. Flag in the play. It looked like the right tackle, Jack Range, made a move. You, you look at a guy with that size, 6'6", 230. And we're talking uh, at the half with Dr. Bob Bo Richter, the athletic director here. His son, Mark Bo Richter, played a few ball, seasons ball, in the NFL. All-star, 77, five-yard penalty, still third down. Mark Bo Richter came out of Hastings College in Nebraska, then went on, caught on with the Chiefs, and had a, a fine but brief career in the NFL. He was a guy that started at tight end and then moved to receiver. You play tight end at the next level. Is A.J. Jackson a guy that may move from wide receiver to tight end? You know, in this day and age, you know, guys play a multitude of positions. You know, you think of a guy like Shannon Sharp, you know, another uh, defense, D2, great. Uh, you know, when guys have that mix of size and speed, you know, you can mix guys around. You know, he's when you're 238 pounds, you're a biscuit away from 245. I mean, <laughs> that kind of guy can be used in limited situations at the line of scrimmage and can get out in the slot and make big plays. Rod Smith, another big receiver. So how many biscuits did you have today? Um, I didn't have any biscuits. I've already had too many biscuits. I'm Outside on the defense. It's a five-yard penalty. Still third down. So it was Northwest that jumped instead of the Vulcans. Mel Churchma's team with a 42-17 lead here, 316 to go in the third quarter. Mel Churchma builds his program a little different than what John Luckhart has done at Cal. They are basically a team that recruits, a program that recruits high school kids, red shirts them a year, allows them to grow into their body and into the program. And Portis, trying to go deep, fires one incomplete. Now, John Luckhart has had tremendous success over the last couple seasons, Row, bringing in Division I caliber athletes, guys who are looking for a place to play, and what he gets are elite athletes that then he can plug in uh, to a to this program to kind of make them sing. You can fill those spots each and every year. Yeah, you know, two definitely two different mentalities. And by seeing both these teams here in the semifinals, we obviously know there's merit to both sides of the coin. Uh, to me, I'm really impressed with Churchma and his ability to really mature and maturate the players that he works with. Getting guys from high school is really a tough assignment to help him grow up as men. Jordan Sim Simmons took his eyes off the ball on the hop and just barely recovered it. An unwise play and now a flag on the play after it was already complete and that one's going to go against Northwest, I believe. One of the few mistakes from Jordan Simmons early this game. He's had a great, done a great job in the return game, took one back to the house, made some nice runs inside, but that time just uh, one of those plays where it got away from a little bit. It was an 81-yard kickoff return for ball score. covered by the return team. After we have a dead ball, first foul on both number eight. Aldwin Foster Redding after the play. Here's a look. Return team number eight, half just to the goal. First down. Just got to hold on to the ball. Couldn't quite see where the foul came in. It was right there at the top of the screen, Foster Redding with an extra shove after the play was dead. Two, two fantastic head coaches directing their programs in different ways. And John Luckhart pointed out, he's like, hey, 17 of 22 on our 2D are high school kids. Here's Council. And Council gets helicoptered at the 20-yard line for a first down. But they're able to use those spots almost like a baseball team would free agency to go out and they need a quarterback to go out and find a great one like Josh Portis or Kevin McCabe last year to fill in a great linebacker like Dante Brown out of Penn State who graduated from Penn State and wanted to be, get on the football field and, and get here and get some playing time. Portis winds and throws, fantastic hands for a first down again for Jordan Simmons who's having a career night and back-to-back -back first downs for Northwest Missouri State. Well, the coaches going head-to-head -to -head tonight are among the winningest in Division II history. You know, we haven't had a 200-win coach go head-to-head -head with another one in college football. 
since the 09 Fiesta Bowl, Mac Brown of Texas and Jim Tressel at Ohio State. And when you start throwing around those names and those win totals, Roland, it's awfully impressive. Here's Council again, and Council goes straight up the middle. Three straight runs, three straight plays for first downs. That one goes for 16 yards. You can tell that Churchma is definitely still focused and trying to kill a mosquito with an ax right now. This offense is staying aggressive. They're up by a lot of points, but you don't see any letdown of the offense. They're still going with their up-tempo. You see them all looking at their wristbands and everything. This offense moves. This train is going, and it's up to the Vulcans to slow it down because right now they're keeping the hounds on them and, and taking this offense to another level. And then another one, this one from Billy Creason. It started with a council run for 14, then a 24-yard strike, then uh, an 18-yard run for council, and now that run for first down. Well, this is what happens when multiple people are running the football. You see creasing in there, that contact, them shoulder pads are still popping, but council's taking much of the workload. You know, you still got a lot of fresh legs for that Bearcat offense. Guys are still eager to try to get on the scoreboard and light things up offensively. Uh, Parmi Bowles, incomplete. Fantastic play to knock it down. In the Vulcan backfield. Well, Bowles took a shot at the end of this one. Well, you know, Bowles is still trying to be aggressive and get the ball downfield, so it's only right when sometime he gets his pass popped a little bit. Gabe Hernandez, nice job with the pressure ups inside, but again, the Bearcats. They're winning this football game, but offensively, look at them. The formations, they're still in normal sets, and they're still trying to be aggressive to uh, get downfield. Here's Council tripped up at the 10-yard line. They had four straight plays rolling of 14 yards or more, 14, 24, 18, and 17 yards on this drive. Those are the first four plays of this drive. What does that tell you about Cal's defense and their depth and, and where they stand right now in terms of uh, – you're trying to slow down Northwest. Well, one thing that's obvious is, is guys up front uh, for the Vulcans, uh, Willie Walker and those guys, they must be getting a little bit tired because those green shirts are progressively knocking them more and more off the line, and there's becoming more gaps, just like the one you're seeing right there for those running backs. And when, when those gaps start getting open, this is this is where running backs feast, man. This is where they they eat. And right now they're seeing a lot of, lot of meals, a lot of food over there to uh, munch on. A lot of snacktivity for the running backs. Another 100-yard game for Council. That's snack-worthy, snacktastic, to borrow a phrase. Snackalicious. Council will take a direct snap again here. 16 carries, 148 yards, looking for his first touchdown. Got it. Another score for Northwest. See, told you. A lot of eating inside for, for the running backs. Tremendous job by the men up front. Dane Wardenberg, Justin Callaway, Ryan Lessman, Cody Johnson, Jason Weissman. Big leader, right tackle. Tremendous job up front. Open up those holes and letting guys like Council have a great snack in the end zone. 41 seconds to round up left in this third quarter. The extra point is good. And it's a 49-17 lead for Northwest Missouri State. The 20th rushing touchdown of the season for LaRon Council. Well, you know, you look at the left side of that screen. You look at C. Wardenberg. Look at those guys. Callaway. There, there's nobody there. You know, there's nobody there from the Vulcan side of the football. And you see Council. Look at him. He sort of just slows down and realizes that everything is beautiful and happy in the world. They have a good chance of headed to the national championship. And they will face... A long-time nemesis, Grand Valley State, two of the winningest programs in Division II. Will likely go head-to-head -head next week in Florence, Alabama. Since 2000, they are the two winningest programs in Division II. Grand Valley State with 122 victories. Northwest Missouri State with 111. It started with Brian Kelly, former head coach. At Grand Valley State, they've had tremendous quarterback play there. And in the postseason, these two teams have gone head-to-head -head numerous times. In fact, in 2007, Northwest beat the number one seed, Grand Valley. Xavier Oman had a 98-yard touchdown one with nine minutes left to secure the win for Northwest Missouri State. But twice in national championships, Grand Valley has bested 
the Bearcats and typically coming in dramatic fashion. Terrence Johnson to the 16 yard line. For all the latest news, stats, polls, and more, visit NCAA.com. NCAA.com is the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. Grand Valley and Northwest have gone head-to-head -head three of the last five years. In 2005 and 2006, Grand Valley State won national titles at the expense of the Bearcats. And in dramatic fashion, Cullen Finnerty with a four-yard touchdown run in the fourth quarter in 2006 in a 17-14 victory. Northwest had four turnovers in that game. They have been, uh, well, I don't want to say they've been perfect tonight as Portis loads up, goes over the middle, pass complete. Now here we get to see the speed of Terrence Moore and Moore to the 40. Pardon me, to the 36. Had a blocker in front of him, and it's a first down regardless. Willie Horn uh, forced him out of bounds that time. Uh, what, you know, how would you characterize Northwest production tonight when you start to look forward to a national title game in terms of using that dangerous word, perfection? Well, what I'm seeing out of the Bearcats tonight is a team that's playing as a team. You know, defensively, they've been opportunistic, causing some disruptions, making it tough for Portis. Offensively, you're seeing a nice mixture of not just Soy catching the ball, but also a heavy dosage of guys rushing. So it's really nice mix-up for the Bearcats. How about this strike to Moore, and he will waltz in for a Cal U touchdown. Just a day at the beach for the junior from Key West. There's still a whole lot of fight left in the Falcons. I mean, here's, here's the thing. Both of these teams are here in the semifinals. These are the best four teams left. And now since the first game's over with, these are some of the best teams left, three teams left in Division II football. And they have a team. They have some playmakers who can make plays. Terrence Moore, Josh Portis just showed you. Well, they definitely deserve some respect. And they can make plays. 13th touchdown of the season for Terrence Moore on a 64-yard touchdown pass from Portis to Moore. He had time to unload, and Moore did the rest on this pretty pass down the sideline. Breathtaking night for the Northwest Missouri State Bearcats, a 28-point third quarter. And they lead 49-24, to 24. a spot in the national championship game awaits the winner of this one. We start the fourth. Cal U just put a score on the board. A 64-yard touchdown pass from Portis to Moore. And now they need a defensive stop. Last time I said that, Northwest returned the kick 81 yards for a touchdown. Now they get tremendous field position with the return out to the 42-yard line. An 18-yard return by Joe Bedard. Sophomore out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. So... The Bearcats with the offense back on the field. Blake Bowles is 16 of 22 tonight. Laurent Council is having a monster tonight. Here he goes again. Council with the bounce. Council's got a blocker in front. And Laurent Council takes it to the 10 before he's finally forced out of bounds. A 43-yard scamper for the senior from Kansas City. Wow. We talk about the green shirts up front. It's pure domination by the offensive lineman. Making creases for LaRon Council, and he is capitalizing him and just cashing in. LaRon Council having a tremendous game, a senior, All-American, second leading rusher in the program history, and he shows you why. He knows how to make the most out of every single opportunity. 
physical play up front from Billy Creason, who gets hog tied out of bounds to set up a second and goal. Rontell's Miles was at the bottom of the pile, but it was one of the big guys who had him wrapped up. Well, right now, the running game for the Bearcats is really frustrating this Vulcan defense, and sometimes you take it out. It's a little bit extra, a little extra action there by the Vulcans, but I understand the frustration they must feel, especially against the run. Marcus Cook, sophomore from Cincinnati, and another big hit from Cook on Creason. Cook out of Winton Woods High School, good program there, great football in the city of Cincinnati. And for all you folks in Western PA, they were watching football this afternoon, a heartbreaking loss for the Panthers at Heinz Field against the Cincinnati Bearcats. Brian Kelly, who cut his teeth as a Division II head coach at Grand Valley State, led him to some national championships, has finished the regular season with Cincy with a Big East title and an undefeated season. The toss to Simmons. Touchdown, Bearcats again, Simmons. You know, this is where the offense of the Bearcats maximizes. There's a lot of guys, so many weapons. Jordan Simpson's been on the sideline resting. He got in, and then he just turned on the accelerators. He burst it to the corner so fast. The defenders who've been in for a lot, they've been getting banged up. They're a little bit sluggish. But the fresh legs of Jordan Simmons, again, torches the Vulcans. Touchdown. Another extra point for Adolph. Northwest Missouri State is on a roll. And the Bearcats are booking their tickets for Florence. Leads Cal PA 56 to 24 as they look to make it to the national title game. Thirteen forty to go in the fourth, and a Northwest Missouri State team which has dominated tonight in the place where they're oh so comfortable dominating here at home. They'll kick off to Cal U once again. Backer takes it out to the 35-yard line. Well, the streak is still alive here in Maryville. A victory tonight, and it's their third longest home win streak standing alone. They haven't lost since a season opener of last year against Abilene Christian. And Roland, how do you explain a program that for the last three years has put together a 12-game win streak or better after losing their opener? If that's the formula for Mel Churchman, everybody should open with a loss. <laughs> no, I think if you ask Coach, Coach Churchman, he would say he definitely don't doesn't want to lose his opener. But when you talk about the way he's building his program, having guys who are blue-collar workers, guys who have a certain sense of togetherness and hard work and attention to detail, that's how you overcome early season frustrations. And it just epitomizes the character that he's developed with this football team. And all you can do is give him an applause for what he's built. And he's built it the right way. You sit and talk with the men on, on his team, and all of them are stand-up guys. And that's a reflection of the coach. You know, when you see players that handle themselves with poise and play the game the right way, it's a really a reflection of the coach. And you guess can give nothing but congratulations to Coach Churchma for playing so well and getting back again to the national championship game. And they're hoping for a different ending this season than what they've had on their recent trips to Florida, or the Florence, pardon me, Portis. Fires over the middle and complete to A.J. Jackson. Jackson and Terrence Moore having tremendous nights. Combined 13 catches for about 130, or 238 yards. 239 yards officially on 13 catches between Jackson and Moore and a pair of touchdowns from Portis. Well, well, I don't want to out, you know, sort of speak before, get the cart before the horse. This game is not over yet. Cal U is definitely still trying to compete. Uh, right now, Josh Portis has showed you, again, his poise and competitive juices getting it to his big play guy in A.J. Jackson. 
Here's Portis, who scrambles out of bounds at the 42-yard line. You're absolutely right, Roland, because this is a high-powered offense that can explode at any moment. They've been a come-from-behind team at times this season. What do they need to do to get Josh Portis into a frame of mind where he can start lighting them up again because they've hit on some big plays? I think that they should get outside the box a little bit and get Josh Portis in the shotgun. You know, you got Terrence Moore that we know has the blazing 4-2 speed. A.J. Jackson has showed you a lot. But then guys like Dominic Curry, Josh Gumbert, number 88, these are all playmakers that you got you to give them every opportunity in the world to, to get them the football quickly. Portis fires a bullet complete. There's your man Curry and a first down for Cal U. They're in the red zone down to the 18-yard line. Well, that's the right mentality. You know, when you see the guys in shotgun, the offensive lineman giving them a chance, nice job picking up the blitz, and there you go. You got your big-time receivers out in space, and no matter what you want to say about this Vulcan offense, we've seen great play out of the wide receivers. That's just one more example. Dominic Curry doing a nice job on that post route. Curry was a basketball standout at Cheney University, played basketball for his dad, and then decided to transfer to Cal U to play football. And at 6'4", 220, looks like a great idea. Backo up the middle. And they said Curry has a vertical at 40 plus inches. The coach talked to the coach. He said, hey, I've seen this guy up there like with his chest above the rim, like pictures of this guy. This guy, Dominic Curry, is a tremendous athlete. Ball, 14 yard line, they call it second and five now for Cal U. Again, you got to stick with the weakness so far against this Bearcat defense. Get the ball to your playmakers, Gumbert, Jackson, Curry, and Moore. Second down, Portis to the end zone. Catch is made. He was out of bounds, incomplete, looking for Curry. Well, that's definitely the right idea. A couple of great things when Portis is allowed to throw the football. One thing is that the clock isn't moving. You know, you get a chance to get those quick strikes downfield. That time, that was just a little miscalculation. Dominic Curry, a guy who hasn't been getting too many reps this football season, but has made some, some nice plays as of late. Just got to get that one more yard and give yourself some space to operate. They will review this, and Wait once again, as a reminder, instant replay review is in effect for Division II football only at the national semifinal and championship game levels of the postseason. It's a Big Ten official who runs the review process here tonight, Steve Beckman. Well, let's take a look at this one. Portis puts it to that outside shoulder. Wait a That's minute. It. All you need is one. Wait a minute. In college football, all you need is one foot down, T. You got it right. That seemed like a touchdown to me. Maybe my eyes, you know, I know I got stuff in my eyes every now and then, but that looked like a touchdown to me. There's another look. Watch his right foot as the catch is made. Does he have control? Right foot certainly down. Seems like he has control there. And Roland, I think the key is he keeps both hands on the ball, and there is no juggle after he goes out of bounds, which suggests he had control. Well, that, that doesn't even seem like that tough a call to make for the ref. I, I'm, I'm seeing him in a great position right there at the bottom quarter of the end zone. I don't get why he didn't see that was a touchdown, but hey, that's why the instant replay is there. So glad the NCAA allowed that for the semifinals. That's Absolutely. That's going to pay some dividends right now for Cal U if things go right. And I think that's a great example of how instant replay works in college football because that was such a quick play to the naked eye. And as side judge Keith Johnson, we get the benefit of slowing it down <laughs> yeah, and we going get the, in to look. We get the benefit. I think that they should pass that memo and get a petition going for Major League Baseball. After <laughs> here, that might also the ruling work. on the field is results. The receiver came down with one foot in bounds. Now Cal U, touchdown. So Dominique Cherry, or Curry, pardon me, gets the touchdown. On the pass from Portis, it's a third passing touchdown of the game for Josh Portis. And how about Curry? He came into this game with two catches on the season. He has two grabs and a touchdown tonight. You know, just showing the perseverance again of this football team. It's very impressive to me to see 
two teams in the semifinals and giving it all they got. Great job by Dominic Curry. 56-31, the shootout continues in Maryville, Missouri. 10.47 to go, plenty of time for Cal. The temporary lighting services for this NCAA Division II telecast are courtesy of Musco Sports Lighting. Musco, the world-class leader in sports, film, and entertainment lighting. And they light up the night here in the nation's heartland for the final home game of the season for this Northwest Missouri State program and these seniors who have won four straight MIAA championships. A fantastic run. And their next game, should they hold on, will be in Florence, Alabama next week for the Division II National Championship. You know, this is what it's all about. You know, all the training camp and the, and the mini camps and the early morning practices and the sweat. It's all about getting these opportunities to go play for a national title. And uh, congratulations to both teams for, for getting here because so many teams don't. Curry with the 15-yard touchdown reception. Capped a 15-play drive for Cal U. For the Bearcats right now, offensively, it's important they just stay aggressive and keep doing what they've been doing. For the Vulcans, look for them to take some shots defensively to try to cause some turnovers and some havoc. No return that time for Northwest Missouri State's Willie Horn. Well, here's what the brackets look like as we move towards a national champion, Grand Valley State. Slowed down Carson Newman's option attack with a 41 to 27 win in the snow this afternoon. They'll be the home team as they play either Cal U or Northwest Missouri State in Florence, Alabama on Saturday afternoon. Man, I can't say enough how much I admire Division II for how they do it. The playoff system is perfect. It eliminates all the computer confusion and technology. The champion is allowed to be determined on the football field, and I love it. This is great stuff. Laron Council up the middle for Northwest Missouri State. He's having another fantastic night. You know, the Bearcats are doing a, a nice job, again, sticking with their up-tempo offense. In case you're just tuning in, they look at the, the wristband. They have their plays down. They get it from the sideline, and they keep this tempo going. No matter what the situation, this is who they are. It's up-tempo for the Bearcats. Council has just hit his career high with a career night to try and take Northwest Missouri State back to Florence. It's 701.3 miles from where we sit right here to the center of Florence, Alabama. Nearly a 13-hour drive if you want to hit I-70, then I-55, and end up in northern Alabama. And that's exactly where Northwest is heading thanks to a career game. For LaRon Council, 20 carries, 207 yards. He gets a chance to take a breather. Billy Creason continues to pop pads down on the sideline for Northwest Missouri State. Extra effort, picks up the first down and a few more. He goes to the 42-yard line. Well, when you see a running back go for 200 yards, there deserves a lot more credit than just him. You know, you talk about having a nice fullback. Previn Perry, number 25. Benjamin Pritchett, 40-45. Then the offensive lineman, Wardenburg, Callaway, Lessman, Johnson, Weissman, and even the blocking tight end, the sophomore, Cal Kilgore. A lot of people deserve credit when a running back rushes for 200 yards in a football game. Tremendous job by everybody that's been blocking for this running back. Soft spot in your heart for the tight end. Absolutely. And I, I want to ask you something else, Roland, as we see flags in this play. They talked about the motto that they use, and you talk about numbers on the wristband. What does 111 mean? <laughs> Dead ball, false start on the offense from 73. It's a five-yard penalty, still first down. Well, we, we had a chance to sit down and talk with the quarterback, Blake Bowles. There he is. He told us about something they always say. It's 111 every day. He said they hear it like maybe a dozen times every single day. That's where one guy 
out of the 11, everybody has to do their job. It's one man doing their job, and when you get all 11 combined, working in one heartbeat in unison, you can have greatness. And on their T-shirts, they wear these T-shirts that says the edge of greatness, and they're always trying to get there, and 111 every day is how you get there, individual guys, and, and I'm seeing a whole lot of outstanding well, individual okay, effort. Some of the stuff you might not see, guys working on the side, guys busting their tails on special teams, defensively bringing hat and hands to every single play. It's a team effort, and this is why the Bearcats are in this position. So Blake Bowles replacing Joel Osborne, who was a tremendous quarterback here. Osborne was a Harlan Hill finalist during his time as a record-setting quarterback at Northwest Missouri State. They've had three Harlan Hill finalists here. It started with Chris Geisen, a tremendous quarterback, led him to a national championship in 98. Tony Miles a wide receiver a few years later, and then Osborne last year. And Bowles trying to replace the legend in his first full season as a starter. Look at the numbers, 38 touchdowns. Osborne played a season and a half as a starter. His first full season was last year. Led him to the national championship game. Well, hey, it's not a knock on Austin, but my goodness, Bowles has definitely made a name for himself as trying to become the next Bearcat legend, and he's done it with a lot of hard work and being diligent. And uh, the guy actually has some speed, too. Talking with the coach, they said he's a 4-5 guy. He actually has some bursts to be a big quarterback. Well, we've seen a lot of great players throughout the course of this season in the last few years covering Division II football. Here are the top three as the Harlan Hill finalist, the Division II Player of the Year, the West Liberty offense this season was record-setting. 49 touchdowns from their quarterback. Wayne State had a tremendous rushing game of the Nick Graziano at Arkansas Tech. Senior quarterback, 4,300 yards and 38 touchdowns. They will award the Harlan Hill Trophy next week in Florence, Alabama, the Heisman Trophy, if you will, of Division II football. So Northwest Missouri State has had three such finalists. Laurent Council was in the top nine this year, did not make it to the final round of three. And another fantastic running back, Xavier Oman, who went over 1,500 yards each of his four seasons. Roland was never a Harlan Hill finalist. That's some, something's wrong with the system. Anytime you, <laughs> that's why I tell you, man, if you don't have a playoff system, I wish you could have like all the Harlan Hill finalists just get a little playoff or something, play a little three-on-three -three basketball or one-on-one -on -one or something. Whatever you have a playoff system, you find out who really deserves the award. Good point. Bold scrambles for first down. The Harlan Hill Trophy is based on regional voting by sports information directors, which means if you have two elite players in one region, only one of them can advance and make it as a finalist. Danny Woodhead of Shattered State was fantastic for a number of years. Awesome. As a running back in... You know, that's almost a dirty word to the folks here in Maryville because they think that Danny, who's a fantastic guy as well, wrapped up his playing career, uh, took that spot away from Xavier. And on Laurent Council, one of the nine finalists, but doesn't make it into the top three. And Northwest Missouri State will be at that dinner Friday night before the national championship game as they award the Harlan Hill Trophy because they'll be playing for a national title the next day. Just a second punt for Northwest Missouri State. All right, folks, gas up your Ramblers. Who wants to make a 13-hour drive to Florence? Division II National Semifinal winner plays for a title, 56 to 31. Northwest Missouri State leading California University of Pennsylvania. Roland, you've said it many times, they do it the right way at the Division II level, playing in tournament format and playoff format for a national title. Division II is made up of 22 conferences from coast to coast, nearly 300 member institutions, roughly 50-50 public and private, and the average enrollment, 4,535. They sponsor championships in 12 men's and 13 women's sports. A few of those were decided today. More on that in a moment. But how about the notables in the Division II Football Hall of Fame? Some guys that you played with and against on this list, and they are Fantastic talents. Yeah, you see Walter Payton on that list. That's awesome. This year's inductee, Sterling Sharp. Another great tight end. We enjoyed uh, getting him inducted as well.
It is a chilly night here in Maryville. The, the, you know, the cow guy said it's, it's not that bad because it's not that windy out here. It's, it's still pretty chilly. Well, I want to say thank you to the Bearcats because we're up here in an awesome, cozy booth and the heat's working. And I sort of feel for them outside right now. 6.20 to go. Second and 10. Sorry, partner. I'm just taking care of business over here. Here's the pressure from Northwest. Another sack. Loose football. And Cal U falls on. It's been another tremendous year at CBS College Sports specifically in covering Division II sports, specifically football, then basketball starting up very soon. And we'd be remiss if we didn't thank all of our fine friends at the NCAA who helped make this possible and helped guide us throughout the course of the season. Gentlemen like Frank Rhodes, Chris Fitzpatrick, Greg Wiedekamp, who do such a tremendous job with the television coverage and to allow these student athletes, Roland, the opportunity to get in the national coverage that they deserve and help us remind folks of why these student athletes choose Division II. Absolutely. I love those guys over at NCAA, but I think this is a great showcase and you realize there's a lot of great talent in Division II. And there's a lot of great people as well. And yep. so that's what I've been most proud of, uh, having a chance to, to feel the, the love and the energy that exists here at the D2 level. You know, for the most part, we're just characters. But we get to see character individuals mm -hmm. when we come to do these games. Yeah, you know, I, from every place, from going to a Minnesota Duluth to, you know, to come into a place like this, you know, it's just a culture, the character, and, and a genuine sort of love and affinity that the teams have for each other. And that's something that is, is obvious when you just sit and talk with everybody. You know, over the last few years since I've been involved with this with this Division II schedule and Roland, of course, having you on board, we've had some very fun trips and some great spots that we've been to. And, uh, and here in the MIAA, which Northwest Missouri State is a part of, it, it just seems that the community support is so great. I know you, you felt that last year when we went to Pitt State to open the season. <laughs> it's all good stuff. Pitt State the Gorillas, man. You know, had a chance to uh, see some hard-hitting football. And it's just, to me, it's just all about the culture. You know, this is, it's cold out here, and you don't see any fans leaving. Everybody's here. They're jam-packed. Look at them. They're going crazy. They're excited. Now, they might be bundled up pretty nicely, but at least they're bundled up and they're here. And that just speaks to their appreciation to this football team. Win, lose, or draw. They've been here. For a lot of folks, this will be, if they can finish this game off, it'll be their fourth time. You know, students here, fourth, fifth time straight going, you know. Pretty good stuff. Good stuff at quarterback as well for Northwest Missouri State. Billy Creason with that carry. Took the handoff from Blake Christopher. Ball on the 33-yard line. Christopher, a sophomore out of Kearney, Missouri. Got uh, good playing time in the Missouri Southern victory. A couple of touchdowns in that one. And the sophomore on the field now as they face a second and four. I, you know, it's been fantastic for me in this Division II run to see so many different places and programs. West Texas A&M a couple years ago, great quarterback play in the Lone Star Conference. Up in the GLIAC, we had a chance to go to Grand Valley. Yeah, hey, you know, watching the, that game today, it was a little chilly. A little chilly. Up there. <laughs> we got the cold. They had the cold and the snow. And every place we go, we seem to encounter an elite player and a guy who puts up big numbers. Tonight, it was Laurent Council and Blake Bowles. And I said, come on, you get enough, t enough TV time, Blake. <laughs> well, Blake Bowles deserves to get some credit. You know, he had an, a tremendous rushing attack to take a lot of pressure off. But when he had his opportunities, he really did a nice job of getting Jesse, the football. First off, the Jake Soy, but then also got guys like Tyler Shaw involved. You know, it was just a, a, a nice competitive performance and, and really had a headstrong game. This is the kind of thing that you need as you head and take that momentum into a national championship. Congratulations, Blake Bowles, for playing pretty good football. You saw the eye black. He's repping the 402 up in Lincoln, Nebraska at a Southwest High School. Ah, you noticed that. Yeah. Big pop on Billy Chris Creason, freshman from Grain Valley. You know, last a couple weeks ago, Cal U played the I-70 battle. They uh, tried to work their way through the playoffs out in Pennsylvania. Creason from Grain Valley, Missouri, right off of I-70, just down the road east of Kansas City. Here, a long road between the two spots, and for Cal U and head coach John Luckard, it'll be a long bus ride back 
about uh, 16 hours on the bus. They, they brought the band. They brought the cheerleaders. Um, they brought a fan bus that arrived this afternoon just in time for everybody to get freshened up to come to the game. As soon as the game ends, they'll go right back. That is some dedication right there. Had a chance, by the way, and want to say thanks for spending some time with the mothers of both Josh Portis and Dante Brown, two tremendous student athletes playing for Cal U. Portis will be back for another year. Brown finishing up his uh, playing career at Cal U. And uh, I know they were looking forward to a victory tonight and a trip to Florence. It won't happen. They'll be on the bus back, but they can, should, and I know are a very proud of the job that their sons have done and everybody on that Vulcan sideline. Yeah, you know, we talked with Coach Luckhart, and he talked about this program as being a, a work in progress to stay at the elite level. They're doing everything right. They're recruiting right. They know how to get the right players. They have the right coaching staff. They have a lot of hardworking people that are dedicated and committed. Uh, th there's a lot of great things to be looked at and appreciated about uh, this Vulcan football team. And, Rest assured, they'll be back to these kind of games uh, in the near future. It was great to visit with John Luckhart, and Lucky's got the program where he wants it to be, and some great talent coming back next year. Saw one of my buddies, a guy from my hometown, running back coach for the Vulcans, Joe Filberto. Nice job by Wendell Brown and Bacco. Your running guys did a great job. Want to give them some credit. Rod Williams, pardon me, Ro, Rod Williams, a freshman from Grandview, Missouri, being helped off the field. Well, now the only question left with a minute 39 is will those goalposts find their way on Colden Pond? It has become a watery <laughs> graveyard here on campus. Colden Pond is just across the way past the athletic facilities where the students find a way to get those goalposts down and then dump them in the pond. So I guess they have, if my math is correct, I'm trying to figure out how many uh, how many goalposts are sitting at the bottom of that pound right now. Do they take one purse? Do they try to take both? Or I noticed there's an extra amount of security over in some of the areas. Those are pretty expensive. On the ground. A few yards on fourth down for Northwest. You know something else that was pretty interesting though I wanted to mention in your halftime interview? They talked about every student getting a free laptop yep. included in their admission. Is that awesome or what? Yeah, I saw the billboard driving up from Kansas City. Laptop and books included. Wow. So if that's the case, and why are the student helpers with us tonight here in the booth who have done such a tremendous job using my laptop? What? I, I don't get it. I mean, do I get a math textbook out of this deal? Come on, guys. Well, one of the other things that uh, Bob Bowrichter talked about is the fact that this institution is in, is in the business of producing college graduates. And I think that, that says a lot about the message that they have. And oh, by the way, they're also in the business putting football as their front porch and getting a lot of fantastic attention and notoriety for this institution by sending their team to the national championship game year after year after year. Face Chuck Martin's Grand Valley State Lakers next week in Florence, Alabama. Here goes Portis. It's a long and storied rivalry history between these two programs, Grand Valley State and Northwest Missouri State. Grand Valley has had the upper hand. Got to commend Josh Portis, the captain, staying in there, fighting to the last minute. No, he told us his mom, Patricia's watching in Jacksonville, Florida. No, no, she's here tonight, my man. Oh, she's here? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Patricia. Patricia, you got to be proud of your son. The guy's... A tremendous competitor. I know everybody respects him, including that guy right there. Churchma respects your son, Josh Portis. Tremendous job competing in the semifinals. Grand Valley has met Northwest Missouri State for the national championship twice. They've won both games. It'll be the sixth overall meeting for a series that started all the way back in the 1920s. Complete. And Cal still has life with this fantastic strike and speed for Terrence Moore. Too little, too late, but still a chance to put more points on the scoreboard. Well, you talk about heart. 
You talk about dedication. Look at Josh Portis still having the poise to continue to finish this game. Terrence Moore showing you that blazing speed getting open. This is a guy that is going to continue to play for this Vulcan offense. Still has a year left. Terrence Moore definitely one of the bright spots of the Vulcan offense. Offensive coordinator Mike Jacobs has to be happy he has a guy like that coming back next year. Two national championship matchups between Grand Valley State and Northwest Missouri State have both gone to the Lakers by a combined seven points total. Wow. And now they will line up and do it again. Florence, Alabama on Saturday. By the way, congratulations to Fort Lewis, won the men's soccer division two national championship today over Lees McRae, one zip final. Women's soccer, it was Grand Valley State with a 1-0 win over Cal State Dom Hills, and then women's volleyball goes to Concordia St. Paul. They bested West Texas A&M. So three national champions crowned today at the Division II level. Another one coming on Saturday afternoon. It will either be the Lakers of Grand Valley State or the Bearcats of Northwest Missouri State, the two winningest programs in this decade. I tell you what, no matter what sports you're playing in, winning a national championship feels great. You know, I had a chance to play college football with some great guys. Didn't go, but I won a Super Bowl. And I'm telling you that these teams and these competitors deserve to be commended. The emotions are real. They're strong. It doesn't matter what sport you're playing. Win the national championship is huge, and you'll never forget it. Portis gets a chance to roll out, lets it go incomplete. The energy and enthusiasm continue from the northwest sideline. And defensive coordinator Scott Bostwick. They've given up 31 tonight. He don't want to give up anymore. How much fun was it to sit down with Coach Churchman, Coach Boswick? He said, Boswick said, we're the yin and the yang. He's cool and calm. I'm fired up. And he keeps me grounded as much as he can, and I keep him fired up. Well, he invited us to come hang out after the game if things went his way, and I think that he might be pretty happy after the game. What do you think? You know, I think he's the kind of guy that would have welcomed us into our, his home regardless of the final score. Absolutely. I agree. He is that kind of guy. Four straight trips to the national championship for Northwest Missouri State. Make it number five. Cody Wilson with the run for Cal U to finish this game. And the goalpost will be finished off in short order as well. A watery grave for one goalpost, a slice and dice at Bernie's for the other. Can you tell those kids are used to tearing down goalposts? How about these coaches? Wow. 200-plus wins apiece. Mel Churchman, Northwest Missouri State, with their fifth straight trip to the national championship game. See you in Bama. You bet. Both teams deserve to be commended. Vulcans, tremendous job competing, responding after going 0-2 to start the football season. They still found their way to be one of the elite teams in Division II football. But for the Bearcats, this is old hat to them. They're used to it. Look at these fans. They're assassins. They're surgeons when it comes to <laughs> goalposts. This is amazing. It's faster than a NASCAR pit stop. <laughs> <laughs> We've got more coming your way. Mel Churchmo will join us <laughs> Look at these guys. after this. The party is on in Merrittville. Two big french fries going through the crowd. we got more to come right after this. <laughs> 